This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. So what do you dream? Forget it, Tina. The point is that everyone has a bad dream once in a while. It's no biggie. Yeah, next time you have one, just tell yourself that's all it is, right? Why you're having it, you know? Once you do that, you wake right up. All day long, I've been seeing that guy's weird face and hearing those fingernails. Fingernails? That's amazing you saying that. That made me remember the dream I had last night. What'd you dream? I dreamed about a guy in a dirty red and green sweater. Well, what about the fingernails? Oh, he scraped his fingernails along things. Actually, they were more like finger knives or something, something he'd made himself. But they made a horrible sound. It's like, scream. Nancy, you dreamed about the same creep I did. Nancy said they'd had a fight. It wasn't that serious. Maybe you don't think murder is serious. How can you say I don't take her death seriously? There was this, there was this guy. He had knives for fingers. One, two, Fred is coming for you. Three, four, and lock your door. Did you have any weird dreams last night? It's not like a rock. Do you believe that people can dream about what's going to happen? No. Do you believe in the boogeyman? No. Rod killed Tina, and you know that. You better keep her home for a few days until she really gets over the shock of this. I've got something better. I'm going to get her some help. Glenn, you bastard. What'd I do? I just asked you to do one thing. Just stay awake and watch me. Just wake me up if it looked like I was having a bad dream. (laughs) Please, God. This is God. What's going on, cinephiles? This is Barrel Age Flicks. I'm Lenny. Yeah, man. And this is... Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ron. Words are hard. Plus... This is Stu, and I'm a pretty fucking princess. We also have... Hey, this is Ragnar. Vagina and Tata! Also... Fuck fuck you, Chase! Yeah, fuck me. All right, hey, everybody. And special guest... Hi, it's Crystal. I make everything awkward. And Lenny. I'm not fucking here, folks. So, part four, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream... Uh, Dream Master. Dream Master. Yeah. Dream Child is the fifth one. Yeah, yeah. Dream yeah. Master, uh, directed by... Uh, the Dream Master is directed by Rennie Harlan, which is exactly. a very well-known director. He's done movies like Cutthroat Island, Die Hard 2, Die Harder, uh, fucking Cliffhanger, you know, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Ragnar's yeah. favorite dude. Um, he's done some great fucking movies, and uh, he was from Sweden, and this was his first, like, uh, American directing film. Yep. And they actually felt really weird about him because he smelled really bad and everything else. He did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he absolutely did. They, he, he came in, and he pushed and pushed and pushed to have an opportunity to direct this film. Yeah. You know, several, several times, Bob Shea told him, get this fucking stinky ass motherfucker out. Of here. <laughs> yeah, he stunk up the room, seriously. Yeah, that's like, funny. Yeah. Uh, between Bob Shea and I forget the the, the woman's name, who was uh, basically an associate producer on all of them. Okay. She's been, and the eventual, eventual director in Freddy... Uh, Freddy's Dead, I believe. Dead, baby. Yeah, the one that, the one that, the 3D one. Yeah. The one with the 3D. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that's, so, um, but she was, she Rachel Ta- Talala. Yes. Talala. Yeah. Yeah. So she was involved from, since day one, um, since, you know, the original nightmare. Um, and so they, they just kept saying, you know, this guy, Remy would keep showing up and each time he'd show up, he'd look f- dirtier and and fucking slimier. Well, he was foreign and stinkier, but he was foreign, but no, he was, he was poor. Yeah. He was. 
but, he came to America hoping to strike it big after doing okay in Sweden. Yeah. And as time passed, nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. And he kept Coach fucking Joe got a new line. And you see this degradation of humanity happening over time. And they're like, you know, fine. Fuck it. You don't, you do it. Fine. Fuck you. Or just stop fucking showing up here. You stink. Oh, All right. But and, he did a decent job yeah. for, especially with the writing, uh, uh, the, writing the, strike. The, the lack of writing. Yeah. So they had an outline for part four. And remember, like, yes, 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 yes. Give it to me. Yep. I will do it. Give it to me. Give it to me. And then all the writers go on straight. Shittiest straight. one. Yeah. They have, all they have is a generalized outline. Yeah. But no, they, they had very, very creative kills. Yeah. But once again, all they had at the time when they started with a generalized outline. No, no, I agree. Because when I watched this movie, beats. when I watched this movie, I was like, "Man, this one, this one sucks." Oh, but it's got creative kills, but it's not a good story. Like the yeah, story kind of you, fell but flat. You don't see them. Yeah. So right, even so from the beginning, when you, you see you, the kill. Yeah. Even from the beginning, when you see how Freddy is resurrected. You know, after, you know... Yeah, dog pissing three. on the fucking fire. Yeah. What the fuck yeah. was up with that Ray shit? Ray was like, oh, no, it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. You have an animal bringing back another another animal creature. It makes so much sense. And everybody's like, um, yeah, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 it's so deep. It's so meaningful. It makes so much sense. Hey. You have an animal coming along, and then he, he lifts his head, and then hellfire comes out of him, and he resurrects, and he's like, um... Oh, oh, okay, Remy. Hey, um, yeah, sure. Did you did you get the dog? <laughs> no. Yeah. The dog's name was Jason. Yeah. And it had it a, and it had spots on him that looked yep. like he had a fucking yep. mask from yep. Jason. Yeah. I thought that was actually pretty funny. I thought that was pretty cool how they did that. He's like, it's so deep, it's so meaningful, it's so deep. It's it, it, it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. He's like, oh, 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 okay, Remy. We we believe you, Remy. No, it, it, <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> and I said, Rem, it's Remy, not Remy. Okay. I don't give a fuck. Well, I do. I fuck up on names, and I fuck get fucking punished by the shots. I just keep picturing it's the Rennie. Mouse Rennie Harlan. I thought it was Remy. No, it's Rennie. Rennie Harlan. Rennie? Rennie, not Remy. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard the he name? You said Remy at least Rennie. three or four times. Have you ever heard the name okay. Rennie before this? Rennie? Rennie. Yes. Have you ever heard the name Remy with mm-hmm. an M before this? Yeah. Okay, okay. but okay. yes. So How many are you times? going to say, you I, are, you no. know, it makes sense to... Say Remy over Renny doesn't matter. It's still wrong. And how many times have I fucked up on a name you're saying and a got a punishment famous shot? Famous person that you're confused. No, you I got, know no, Renny no, no, Harlan. No. You got punished for confusing for, with other uh, famous people or brutalizing. Okay, but Remy and Renny are fucking different still. I fucked up on names if that are people different. I've never heard of the name. Do you Renny agree, Renny Ragnar? Do you Remy? agree? <laughs> what, what, hold, hold, are you calling hold. for a vote? What do you want me to agree on? Yes, Our, I call for a well, vote okay. because you fuck up on. Na- I, okay, I fucked up in so many names. Then call for a vote. Crystal, you better back me up on this. I swear to God, I've been fucked no, on so many mind. names. Keep Renny mind. and Remy. Remy. He said Remy, Remy at least four times. Why do I feel like I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be tiebreaker on this shit? Because this is fucking bullshit. I get fucked on names, and he he's saying this shit's wrong. Like four, he said no. it like three or four times. It's fine because Renny is not it's a Ren-ni. normal name, but You're that's right. his no, name. I, I am I am I am absolutely saying his name may be Renny, but I may say Remy because I've heard the name Remy and numerous people throughout my life. Well, you know, you're the first that I've ever heard. heard that. I've never heard that bullshit. You never heard Remy? I've never heard famous? Remy Harlan. I've heard no, Remy no, no, Harlan. I said Remy. You said Remy. All, right, all I'm saying is Remy. All right, I've heard the name yeah, Remy funny. in my life all right, numerous, I, numerous, fuck, numerous fuck times. All right, all right, I call a vote. Versus Remy. All I right. call a vote. So, he, said, he said it multiple times. All right, so Crystal. What is your vote? Ragnar. What are you calling for? That he said the name wrong multiple times. Remy, Remy, that it's Remy. Punishment when it's actually worthy. Remy. Even though I fucked up on names so many times, even though it was just worthy. by a by an alphabet letter. Seriously, I've done it before. But why he, are you even thinking about been this? Voted on was why, super, why are you even thinking super, about this? Yeah. Just like I got the one, one on Rogue One where I said Jimmy Kimmy Smits, Jimmy Smits, Kimmy Smits, super Remy, famous Remy, no Remy, Remy and no, Harlan, no, this is not uh, the, the same as famous level of fucking goddamn Jimmy Smits. Remy Harlan is very. Changed, what are you talking you about? No, that is sex. fucking bull. No, you I, changed I, his no, fucking I call a vote. gender. I call a vote. You changed his gender. I call a vote. <laughs> 
All in favor. All in favor. I, stew I on Stu for taking, a pun- or taking the punishment wheel. For saying Remy God, versus a Rennie. <sighs> Vote I. All right. So you fuck up every show. You do. But what does that have to do with it? I'm still talking. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We have shit to think about. I have an itch in my ear. What do you have to think about? I... No. All right. Look. All right. You I'm fuck up. You, you you fuck up on the names on every show. Okay. And you do get punished for it, but not on every show, huh? But not on every show does he get fucked up. You know, punished for fucking up names. For 80, Rogue One, for Kimmy Smith and Jimmy Smith, because you changed the fucking you goddamn name. Remy, Remy and Renny. What? There's a. It, it's the same thing. No, it's not. They are changing the sex. Kimmy is accepted as a female name. Hold on. Rennie versus Remy. Remy you've been at the last couple of recordings, right? Yeah. There was one time he messed up a name and everybody corrected him after he finished the sentence and he did. Which one? Which 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 one? There's there's been I a believe, couple yeah. of those. Yeah. yeah. So there's been times that he's messed up a name and y'all just said, Hey, that is not right, and y'all laughed at him and just kept on going. This is true. So, so. That's why I'm sitting over here like I got a dilemma. That's true. That's true. That's true. Because y'all cut him slack? That's true. We do cut you slack on it. Yeah, so. but do you ever cut him and slack? Again, you hey, guys, I think uh, there was one earlier. You barely uh, ever does. You both have, have said, stated out, you've heard the name Remy before. You have never heard the name Renny before. You have both stated that. So we all are, three of us are in agreement that Remy is a real name. That we understand and immediately recognize. Rene is not something our mind immediately fucking connects as a name. All right, take the vote. Take the vote. I mean, it, it don't matter anymore. It's, it's, it's okay. whatever. I'm risking it for a biscuit, nay. Nay? Wow. <laughs> biscuit risked for. I Look, I f- fuck it. I'll spin the wheel if I end up spinning the wheel. Uh, <laughs> Ragnar, it's not Well, the thing is, is that like, all right, so you voted no. Stu votes. Vote with your honesty. No, no, with your honesty. no, no, no. no. Well, I, I, I get to vote also. Right. I vote nay. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, uh, vote. you vote nay. No, you not, said you vote nay. That's not what I meant. You said I mean, you vote nay. I mean, no, and I got the word. No, that's not what it. It no. carries. You said you vote nay. No. I, you said you vote I'm nay. I'm correcting myself. I'm voting. Ragnar has washed his hands. No, like, no, nope. no. I, I, I can correct myself. You know, there's a thing about correcting yourself. I vote. Once that vote goes into the box, yep. your hands are washed. Right, you that put, is fucking you bullshit. You cannot put right your hand dead. into the box to try to re, you know, take your vote out. <laughs> I never said I vote. Yes, you did. You said I vote nay. You it's called like you for the vote. Out, right? You failed for the vote. But you do have to vote, Ragnar. You do have to vote, technically. And we're just going to be nice and not do the whole, like, wait till the end thing. I vote uh, yes. Okay. So, now which means, Ron, as the one who called the vote, you failed. And I corrected also, myself. Also, Ragnar, I corrected as the one myself. You voted with the failing okay, vote. You have to also spin. This is fucking bullshit. What is this fucking is this? Roast. Grab something yummy. Well, at least I get something yummy. There you go. Now, Ragnar has to spin. Uh, oh I just did took a, 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 a congratulations shot to myself. There's my... <laughs> Let's see what we Are you loving here. your show? I am. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. is what I was hoping to be. It'd be an organic discussion of of Freddy. Punishment by Ron. Drinks it's are hard. hard. By the way, I like the fact that Punishment by Ron has to be on this big ass fucking goddamn post it <laughs> compared to everybody else. Punishment by Ron. Drinks are hard. <laughs> you needed the um, Yes. <laughs> Everything else Whatever. is like these half post-its. What do you like? Except for Ron. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let you go. No, I'm going to let you go for it because uh, you, you, you voted in my favor, so I'm not going to punish you hard. I don't, I'll give it a bucket. I'm letting you pick. That's I'm, uh, because you voted in my favor, so I'm not going to give you a bad. Yeah, Stu, I was considering getting hypnotic for the bucket, but the little bottle is shaped so specifically that I know you'd probably know what it is and avoid it. No, I would. I would. I would honestly, whatever my as soon as I dive my hand in, whatever I happen to grab, that's what I'm pulling out. Ninety-nine Ladies, watermelon. Oh, you just hey. helped Ron's odds. I congrat. I I congratulate that. That sucks. A fucking homeless man's asshole. What? You don't mind watermelon though. I don't. But it's not good. Hey, but you but hate. this isn't. The fuck you, but, dude. This isn't fucking good. 
I but love dude, 99. I, will, I'll, I'll let you. Yeah. You if, like if, it? If, if, no. It, no. Not watermelon no, flavor. You, you got to take it. You like 99 dude, anything? I, I like watermelon. I not the watermelon. Like no, the I know. I like the no, raspberry. Good. I, I like the give you something whatever you wanted. Fruit punch. Okay. Because you all voted in my favor. All bad. All of 99 Drink this. So you know that I backed you up. I got you. Don't worry. There you go. So you actually like this homeless man's asshole shit right here? It's not good. The 99 I mean, crystal. Try this. What is it? What is this or what's that? What is it? Vagina de Tata, what is it? <laughs> that is blue raspberry 99 with fruit oh, punch. Oh, God, that's nasty. What the fuck? It's too I mean, sweet. I, can't, I got short arms. I'm like a T-Rex. Oh, God. Got big head so and arms. At least I'm bold. Okay, so. That's not bad. That's pretty tasty. See? Ten minutes so, on that fucking argument. And one of those so will part have you three. warm. Oh, we, we're already on part four. Uh, hold on. Am I done with part three? Yeah, we we're finished part three. No, we we were work, we were working on part four. We we're getting close to part th- four. Right. We were already working on part four. No, we are not. No, we're still on three. We're still on three. Do the math. Numbers are hard. Where's your shot? Where's your drink? Where's your drink? Oh, I just took a swig of beer. We were just getting ready to For my get shot. into part four. Hence why we got the argument of Rennie Harlan. Oh, okay. I think Ragnar said. Okay. So. All right, hold on. This is my pick for my thing. I'm he just already did his. That. He already drank his. Oh, he oh. hasn't drank it yet. Oh, no, I thought he had. No, I was waiting. I apologize. I was waiting, I and he said he already, already fucking did his. That's I already, why he no, did I just took a swig of beer, but I'll take this for my shot. So there you go. This is the one that I picked. All right, I that is not it. a shot in any way, shape, or form. I will go pour a shot of something. Give me yeah, one Yeah, that is not a shot. All right. Go, yay! All right. Fuck off. I don't know why fucking Chase doesn't like that stuff. It's, it's good. It's the fact that it's a cluster berry. He can't stand But the, the same way you don't like the watermelon, <laughs> and it doesn't make sense to most people. Yeah, well, All I right. like blackberry. Blackberry doesn't bother me. <laughs> but it's the exact it's same thing. It's the exact same thing. It's You don't like fucking watermelon. He doesn't like cluster berries, you know, even though he got hemorrhoids and they're nothing but cluster berries. But like I said, I backed well, you up. That, that, well, that's why he doesn't like them because they clustered up. They remind him. Yeah. Together. Yes. Yeah, so. You're getting a lot of punishment shots in your episode. I'm not. Fuck you. I'm not getting money about it. He's fire. hoping the trash can will have to get used. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping for more Malort watermelon fucking goddamn shit. I really hope for that. Brown chicken, brown chicken. All right, so on to four. So we got Rennie Harlan. See, we were talking about part four. Yeah, we, we were just starting to. So but Rennie Harlan comes along. And Rennie yeah. Harlan is a Swedish director, like you, you pointed out. Um, and this is his first chance at an American film. Yeah. And he, he tries to sell it. He tries to sell it. tries to sell it. Eventually, given the green light. And... Um, they have a generalized outline of a script, and uh, he starts going ahead and filming. Writer strike hits. Like, <laughs> fucking suck. Fuck. Fuck. We don't have a goddamn real script. We have a half ass. Well, he had a script, script, though, right? A half ass. Yeah, but weren't they also writing the script during the mo- the filmmaking of the movie? Yeah. It was one thing that I- happens a lot, though. How yeah, no, fast they were trying to turn and burn, turn and burn. And those movies yeah. end up, those movies end up so. like Alien 3. That was one. Right. That was a big thing right but there. But that gives Rennie a lot of fucking freedom. Yeah. yeah. He's like, all right, cool. So this all is right. for number three. No, this is for four. Or four, I mean. Yes. So, all right, cool. Lot, this though. is what we're going to do. We're going to bring a dog pissing fire because, you know, bring in the animalistic, you know, nature of, you know, animal versus, you know, human nature, you know, and shit like that. And, oh, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And people, actors like, um, sure. Okay. Sure. We'll go with that. Fire pissing mutt. Yeah. And we're going to bring Alice Perfect. back. Yeah. Alice back. Yeah. You know, but we can't get Patricia. Patricia um, has said no to us. So we're just going to recast her. I knew that looked fucking stupid. Yeah, we're just going to recast her. And there's no real clear reason why. Um, oh, they don't know. Oh, nobody oh. has that flat out said if it was New Line wasn't willing oh, to pay so lucky. Patricia Arquette, you know, the amount of money to come back or her schedule had gotten blocked up and timing wise, she couldn't come back. What Nobody has really fucking doing? locked up. Well, this was early 90s. This was her first. Uh, Patricia Arquette in early, Nightmare 3 was early, her first major role. Early 90s. Early 80s. Mid 80s. Yeah, no, this was Arquette. 
Yeah, Patricia Arquette in the early 80s in Nightmare 3 was her first major what? role. That was it. Why am I thinking early 90s with that one? I don't know. I don't know either. Well, part four was 1988. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, Patricia, uh, nobody has thought out said, and they just assumed timing-wise she was attached to other shit, but they. It just feels older. They wanted the Alice character hmm. back uh, in order to continue the story and shit like that. So they recast her. She comes back, you know, and the actress doesn't do horrible. I'm not going to say. But she's no Patricia Arquette. Exactly. And Patricia Arquette is an amazing actress, wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. something to do with what she does with her eyes just kind of fucking draws you in. And very, very few actresses have that ability. Yeah. So I'm not taking anything away from Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night. That's the actress they got to replace uh, Patricia. Who? Tuesday night. Her first name was Tuesday. Did they hate Monday and Wednesday? Her I was la- just about to yeah. say. Her last name was Night, like K-N-I-G-H-T. Did they hate the fucking I-G-H-T. goddamn daytime? No, K-N-I-G-H-T. So, the, she's royalty? No, she's a knight. She, has she been sired? Yes, she has. <laughs> what the fuck? Yes. Like, I'm not taking anything. And you, what do the? See, you do see Tuesday back Come on, in, man, um, really? Uh, New Nightmare. You see her at the funeral scene. Did not notice that. Yeah, if you pay attention, you see her. What the fuck? You see um, the Puerto Rican who played Italian. I didn't see that. Yes. Wait, and Patricia Arquette was in New... No, no, you don't see Patricia Arquette, but you see Tuesday night. And uh, the funeral scene um, in New Nightmare. Damn, I missed that. I didn't see that. I'm going to have to watch that again. I I, I didn't see that. Did you catch the Puerto Rican playing Italian? Yes. Yes. Uh, They kind of... It was weird. They chose to focus on him versus focusing on Tuesday night. I was like, that's... A weird choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the people you're to focus on, you're to focus on him. <laughs> all right. Chase has passed the Tuesday fuck out. Who played the role numerous times? Yeah, really. Okay. He, he's a sleepy, sleepy boy. No worries. It's okay. He's okay. So uh, Sweet. Go come to bar. But well, you know, we we're going to have to like, wake him up for his pint reviews yeah. and everything. Yeah, but. <laughs> oh, he's Seven out of five! <laughs> Yeah, we sit here and we're laughing at the fact that he's like up here silently snoring, but like give it 20 seconds or like a couple of minutes. He'll be so, like, it'll right. be bad. So you got Dream Warriors who you're showing Alice past the baton. Uh, I'm sorry, no, it wasn't Alice. Uh, what was Susan character? Was it Alice? Oh. Yeah. Alice was the one given the abilities from Kirsten. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. they, they um, killed off all the characters yeah, yeah, from part exactly. three. It wasn't Alice um, that yeah. Tuesday night played. But they, they killed off the characters that survived in part three, yeah. like even the uh, the uh, the tough black dude that uh, yeah. um, uh, because he was yeah, there when for, when the, uh, the dog. Kincaid was, by the way, the actor is super gay. Yeah, you, you could tell. It was very funny because yeah, he was like the he tough went, guy. Yeah, he, 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 was, he was like, I'm fat. You want me to play strong? Um. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I love how he said, I, but I loved how he said, "Motherfucker." <laughs> yeah. Um. And the way they killed Joey. Uh, fucking Joey. Yeah. Motherfucker Joey from three and four. Oh my god. And uh, Kincaid and Joey's uh, actor both said it was really, really fucking weird to try to, you know, film this reuniting scene. Yep. In high school. You know, went with this chick that we've never met before. It was, it was kind of weird, um, <laughs> and trying to develop that chemistry because the part three apparently everybody loved, like fell in love with Patricia, <laughs> like you know Kincaid's character, uh, Kincaid's actor, Joey's actor, um, even the fucking professor's uh, actor, the the shrinks actor. All of them fell in love with Patricia, like literally fell in love with Patricia and were trying to do anything they could to start dating her. Yeah. You know, the actress in real life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They, um, they, they, there was something about her that some magnetism that fucking drew every fucking male's attention. Um, was it the, uh, smile? But they, they, none of them could point out. There was just the something eyes? about the way she carried herself huh. and her, and the way she looked that all of them were like, yeah, she's, she's it. Yeah, I loved her in Lost she Highway. Fucking money. Uh, yeah, well, she was amazing. She was in Lost in good. Yeah, she was hot. Stick <laughs> hot. <laughs> also, uh, True Romance. Yeah, no, Patricia is an amazing, amazing actress. She's able. Boardwalk to, Empire. Yeah, 
she's able to show so much just in her eyes. Yeah. She has so much capability to show emotion in her And I eyes. think that's why she didn't go over the role, because she wanted to go acting, pursue a more, uh, like... No, she came back and said she would have gladly reprised the role. Uh, she, she's been on record on saying that she would have gladly reprised the role, but nobody can narrow down exactly why she didn't. Hmm. Didn't know if it was timing or if it was money. Or it was probably what? just wrong choices at the time. Or maybe her her um, her uh, um, uh, agent probably told her, "No, you need to do something different or something like that." Maybe that's what it was. Well, Sometimes no. a lot of actors listen to their agents more than themselves. So I know. I I think if she had come back for uh, oh. Dream Master, uh, and Rennie would have utilized her. Better than um, what he ended up utilizing her Tuesday night uh, character in uh, part four. I think she would have continued on. Yeah. Okay. So Rennie comes in, you know, does this stuff and it's creating a lot of stuff on the fly. He really is because all he has is a generalized outline before the writer strike happens. So he's creating a lot of the kills, um, just making them as it goes along, including uh alice's brother's death alice's brother death if you remember it did not show freddie one bit no yes and that's because originally he was supposed to live okay but then they realized oh fuck we already filmed his funeral scene fuck um yeah uh what do we um yeah, he needs to die now. <laughs> um, <laughs> shit. What the fuck do we do now? Uh, Robert Hill was like, yeah, um, you already got all my filming in the can. <laughs> I ain't coming back. I ain't going to sit through that shit. You pay me more? No. Okay, fuck you. I ain't coming back. All right. Um, so that's why they randomly came up with this invisible fucking killer, you know, for Karate Boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and... For what they were doing, it worked. It did. For what they were doing. Ah, man. Oh, no, dude. I mean, what would you have wanted to see? Would you want something? to see Robert see Eng- something? Would you want to see Robert England try to do karate? I would he did. He fucking him. did, though. In, yeah, he did. In Freddy vs. Jason. In, no, not just that one there. He did it in the other ones as well. That was yeah. more wrestling. He, no, he he just grabbed and stabbed. That's all he did in the uh, the other ones. He grabbed and stabbed uh, or sliced. That's it. Yeah, we, he. Oh, man, I don't know, dude. And the actor, I his his filming. He was like so proud. Yeah, I went ahead and I went and I studied karate for like three days in order to <laughs> try to put forth you know the best effort I could. And you know, throw sort of everything I can into the uh, the the actor. You know, and, like, and like, you know oh what? Oh my god! Me dude, shut the fuck up! Those. Shut the fuck up! I fucking hate you. Piss me off about that shit. There. By the way, I am now drinking Chase's shot of Celtic honey that he just left on the table. Fucking vagina. before he passed out, and before Crystal decided to kick him off our show. Which thank you, Crystal. I'm sorry. It it either be him asleep on the sofa or asleep in the chair. It was mm-hmm. going to happen. He was he was asleep in the chair, anyways. Part four, even though it was bad writing, there were very lot of creative kills in that one. It was except yeah. for the right, so karate scene. The, the yeah, the didn't karate scene me. fucking sucked because I'm looking at it and I'm like, all right, so uh, uh what what was the uh, the the female's name? The 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 one with the shit fucking attitude, the one that worked out all the time. That's Debbie. Yeah, Debbie. Yeah, the one that get kill, that killed like a cockroach. Her, and she and all right. So her attitude goes into Freddy sick. No, when they're stuck in the town, when they're stuck in town. That's six. Six, and yeah. it, that is six. Yeah, that was the all right. So. Her attitude there basically mirrors the her equivalent to the previous film. Yeah, and her the it pissed me off because the way that she's like hitting the heavy bag and shit for somebody who is trying to be proactive in self defense and self uh, uh, self defense self. 
strengthen. Pro- protective. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, and a lot of this was going at going on during the time frame of the nineties of women empowerment. Mm-hmm. And it, it annoyed the shit out of me because like the way that she's training and hitting the heavy bags and everything like that. It's like you're you're not doing any No, she didn't. You're you're not doing anything at all to help yourself. The only thing you're gonna do is damage yourself. Yep. You know, and it's felt like so my th- my whole thing was was that when she's kicking and punching the heavy bag, you know, you're not leaning in and you're not like with your roundhouses. You We're know. talking about part six? No. No. In part four. Yeah. The one who um was focused on strength training and uh the scatter roaches. Yeah. Uh yeah, that's Debbie. Yeah. Okay. And it leans into the the future episode. Yeah. The the, the, the future the, movie. The future movie, I'm sorry. You know, you you you're not getting into it because it it the 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 damage that you're trying to inflict is not going to do anything to your individual that you're fighting. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt you a fuck ton more. Yep. Yeah. You know, than what you're actually trying to do. If you're trying to do a roundhouse kick, you don't want to you don't hit with the inside of your foot. You hit with the ball of your foot. You don't punch with the backside of your knuckles. You hit with the punch of the your two knuckles, your pointer and your middle finger. Yeah. Those two knuckles there. So they I don't know, man. Like that's just nitpicking. That's just what pissed me off about those about her training and fighting. Yeah. And the fact that she had supposedly spent this lengthy period of time losing her mind, going to the asylum, and then coming back out. And then now she's in high school again. And, oh, she has this great, super close, you know, group of friends. I'm like, eh, that's not really it, how it's going to work. No, it didn't match up at all. Yeah. Eh, it's not how it's going to work. But they just try to sell it. And then all of a sudden, everything. Oh no! All these people, except for uh, Joe and Kincaid, were sort of the only survivors who they killed off in the first eleven pages of the fucking script. Yep. Um, I'm gonna show you that. Which Joey's death really fit with the pre-established character that he had in part three. It really fit with his pre-established character, and I respect this. I can see that. that. Yeah. You know this fucking hot bitch fucking you know draws him into his own death and i'm like okay okay that works yeah. that works that works a lot and i actually had to point out to my oldest i'm like uh, he he recognized kincaid as kincaid but he did not recognize joey was the same guy from the previous film no that's joey he just fucking has longer hair now yeah all right he he grew his fucking hair out and shit like that and now he can talk <laughs> all right that's that's his whole fucking thing. Yeah, he was a mute before. Yeah. Um after what the shit that he went through and stuff yeah. like that. And, uh I'm like he no, he you know, he went through the shit, he survived. Remember, you know, we literally just finished watching this and now it picks up relatively like, you know, immediately after. It's like, oh, oh, okay. And so and the the Joey's death uh in the waterbed. I'm like yeah, that that that, that fits. That fits Joey. That fits Joey so much. And well, Kincaid, Joey's the one that uh, dealt with the whole Freddy Krueger uh, uh, topless nurse chick, right? Yes. Which originally so. was actually <laughs> going to be the nurse wearing a Freddy mask, and they ditched that idea. Yeah, I've seen fucking goddamn it's bad. screen test of that. It is fucking weird. Yeah, it, it didn't look right. It is weird as shit. I'm like, ah. Oh, you got to see a good pair of tits. Confusing uh, boner. I like to see that test screen. Go ahead, Gristle. What do you have to say about that? Odd image to picture. It is. Very... Freddie said on the blonde nurse's body. Yeah, they put her in the makeup so it looked like Freddie's head on. The, it was weird. But they deleted that scene and then they changed it. 
And then they had the uh, the chick have the whole tongue come out. Yes. Yeah. That was a part three, of course, of Dream Warriors. So, and the actor who played Kincaid, you know, he would come out and said, he's like, listen, I was telling my friends when they're coming to see part four, if you're coming to see me, you better not be late. You really better not be late because I am dead so quick. I am dead so fucking quick. Do not waste your time. Do not go get fucking goddamn concessions. Do not fucking goddamn wait in line. All right. If you do not show up, you know, when the credits roll, then you are going to see me. I am oh, wow. fucking dead. Wow. Uh, and he, he doesn't complain. He's like, listen. They could have killed me instead of page 11. They could have killed me on page two. <laughs> All right. yeah. I'm thankful for what I had. And they did well. They did well. I had, uh, and no, having no script in part four, uh, Rennie did great with what he had to work with. And, and he got, and he got, um, noticed and he directed yeah. some other great hit, um, action movies and stuff like that, which is weird because all of his other movies are action compared to this one. All right. Well, so this one's kind of fucking action though. It is. Yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, but not like his other actions. He has great visual effects. He yeah. does throughout the film. Well, the uh, visual effects get better throughout yeah. the uh, films. So then you got part five, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream, dream Child, Dream Child, mm. uh, part of the Dream uh, Trilogy. This is the whole start of the whole. Uh, well, not start of it. They talked about it, but this is where they show the whole the nun being the the hero of the story, basically. No, no, it's. I don't take it that way. I take no. it as that's just another reasoning behind Freddy's mentality. Yeah. I would say the nun is the, um, I wouldn't say the cause, but. I love how Freddy's born, Almost though. the after effect. Yeah. 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 But I, I love how. the after effect of everything that has happened. Freddy being know? born, though? No, and I thought that was a really creative idea. I was talking to Ragnar when we were just on a smoke break, and I appreciate part five. First creativity of an idea. Yeah. You know, taking a child, you know, and an, an, an embryo, which, you know, studies show they are asleep 90 plus percent of the time. Yeah. He's going to absorb the same powers that his mother has. So drawing people in and controlling shit that way, I thought it was a really creative idea to have Freddy be able to fuck with people in a different way than he has been up to this point because it's been proven. Alice can now draw people into her dreams the same way, uh, uh, you know, prior incarnation can. And then even during a waking state, the fact that the child may be asleep, it, you don't know what is real, what is not, um, yeah. the time loops and everything that happens. Uh, Dan's fucking death, which was fucking goddamn amazing. Talk about the motorcycle. Yes, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really creative death and how they did that because they made the whole motorbike and how he basically got fused to the bike and became the bike and he had this yes. like skull head. Yes, I thought that was a really neat way how they did that. The special effects on that were amazing. Yeah, the uh, one one practical the, too. One of the tasting rooms that you all did uh, that I wasn't able to be a part of. You know, timing, um, best vehicles, you know, uh, the Freddy cycle was on my list, uh, right there. It's just cause how weird and strange and fucking, uh, you know, it's pretty fucking badass. Yeah. I was it like, really, yes, it's weird, obnoxious. It's odd and it fucking fits. It yeah. Really does. I got the need, the need for speed. Uh, I was like, yes, throttle yes, down. Yes. This <laughs> is a shitty movie, on street. But God damn it, this is a fucking amazing goddamn death Hell right yeah. here. All right. Uh, the weird embryonic fucking tunnel that it was happening, and you know, throughout the visions. So I was like, this is a cool idea. It really is shittily fucking executed. As a film, they dropped the ball on so many opportunities. So we're, we're on part five. Yeah. Directed by uh, Stephen Hopkins, who also did Predator 2. Yep. Also did Lost in Space. And yeah, that one was released on September 13th, 1991. Yep. That explains a lot. Oh, sorry. Uh, August 11th, 1989. Sorry, I read the wrong one. Uh, but Stephen Hopkins. Uh, yeah, the Freddy's Edmund 91. Yeah, yeah, sorry. But that 
the great director. He's done a lot of great. Like I said, Predator Two is good. Uh, he also did uh, Scorpion King. If you remember, no, that was Chuck Russell. Sorry, I'm you're getting... saying that was a great film. <laughs> that was not a great. That film. was Chuck Russell. Sorry, Stephen Hopkins. But he, he like I said, um, Predator Two I think is one of his best. But he goes for yes. a lot of violence in his films, <sighs> and uh, I thought it was very you creative. Know, the Predator series, you know, you're five of five. Mm-hmm. I didn't give Predator two five no, out of five. Yeah, Predator. I think Predator series, and I still stand by it. Fuck it, hey, you're wrong. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I wasn't wait till I get this ranking. Um, <laughs> so you got Predator five. Uh, no, sorry, Nightmare five. Uh, Dream Child. You know, uh, you got Alice back again. You got Dan back again from the previous films. Alice is pregnant now with Dan's child, uh, and you come to find out. The child is dreaming, and Freddy's influencing those dreams. And be, you know, I'm your buddy. I'm your friend. All right, I'm let's go daddy. kill everybody. He's also then influencing Alice's mind while she dreams and falls asleep. You know, you're seeing this, like, you know, six, seven year old, you know, child. And he's like, yeah, come on, bitch. Uh, All right. you know. So, how does she get knocked up? By fucking Dan? Before the movie starts? <laughs> I mean... like Yeah, that's right. Like, the whole title sequence is of the sex scene. Yeah, her and Dan are fucking. Yeah. He doesn't wear a rubber. He comes inside of her during her ovulation Did cycle. Did your mama not give you the talk? Um, Hence, a child is no, created. I that part. <laughs> I did. Yeah, that title sequence is like all erotic and everything. It was. And then you go into this. Spermazoa Freddy? Did. This fucking shit show of a show. Go ahead, Crystal. What do you got to say about that? This is spurs on the front. I just like to see a tiny little sperm of the hat. Yes. Do, 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 do. Part five. <laughs> I, I won't so lie. Do, 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 do. I know part four had bad writing because of the whole writer's strike, but part four, five, uh, part four was boring other than the kills. But part five actually was entertaining, more entertaining, entertaining to me than part four. See, I disagree. I felt that part, part five, four was better. Uh, everybody in part five was a lame copy of characters that came before. Um, they were very two dimensional, uh, and had no real reason to exist. And I was just like, okay. And I, I, I try not to hate on child actors. I yeah. really try not to because they're fucking goddamn child actors. It takes years to develop and hone the craft. I understand that. Jacob, it's like we got the Pet Cemetery kid in uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Yeah. Jacob was garbage. Um, at the end, when he was trying to do the Freddy voice, I was like, fuck you. I really hope someone just kicks you in the fucking jaw. I really fucking do. I hated Jacob all throughout the entire film. I felt that it was a waste of a, a unique idea that they failed to deliver on completely. Yeah. See, that's what I expected when I was watching this one was you were absolutely going to shit all over that fucking character. I, I, I really could not yeah. stand part five. I really no, could. It was dumb. It was, it, it, it was weak. Part four, I could tell they were making up as they went along, but I felt they succeeded in what they made up. I was like, okay, okay. He kept fucking rolling with it. He's like, all right, fuck it. Um, yeah. Karate scene. All right. Um. Yeah. Let's fuck it. Got him. Roach scene. I. I. I don't fucking know. Um. And just fucking making shit up, and it worked. It fucking somehow worked. Part five. They actually had a script, and it failed throughout the entire fucking you know being. Was it actually a good idea? Roach scene. Uh. Was that in part four? That was in part four, not five. As I said, in part four, he was making shit up as he was going along. And it somehow worked. Okay, I thought you were talking about yeah, part no, five. No, no. Sorry. Part five, they actually had a script and it didn't work. Like I said, in my opinion, the movies got worse in the storytelling until they got to Wes Craven's New Nightmare. That's when it got very, very good creative and good writing. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. All right, before we hit that, though, we have to hit Freddy's Dead, part six. Freddy's Dead is the comical looney tunes version of freddy krueger like they really yes they went it all out and made him they actually comic they, relief they were more jumping than on the trend at the time of killing the killers well it was supposed to be the last movie well, yeah it was they it they even been. had a uh a, a funeral at the hollywood cemetery yeah you know for freddy they you know for publicity they had a funeral uh freddy krueger um in order to try to sell oh this is it freddy's dead 
Let's everybody fucking jump aboard. Let's everybody come and pay and see this. What they ended up with on screen was a comical version of everything. And they changed, they, they retconned his history. Oh, oh yeah. Freddie had a daughter. You, y'all, y'all didn't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. He absolutely had a daughter the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. They tr- the they, house, the white fence and all that. Yes. Yeah. They tried to add I'll more. I'll never tell. They try to add more and yeah. more and more to Freddy Krueger. It's like every movie they were adding more to his background. Yeah. Which, it, which I. Because you would have yeah. never expected him to have a daughter and yeah, be the way that he was in the first one. write the type of background history, you know, in part one. You know, expecting it to make to a sixth film, you aren't going to fucking you know do that. You realistically, you're just making this shit up as you go along. But yeah. also, with how quickly they're churning and burning, you don't have time to actually sit there and think, "Yeah, this doesn't feel right." Let's go ahead and change this up. They 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 didn't give the the time and respect that it deserved. Yeah, for the character, um, but they did some creative deal. One of the best jokes in the entire series happens on Freddy to that. Um, the map unfolding and continuing to unfold and continue. <laughs> yeah, unfold, no, that was funny. And continue to unfold as a person who grew up in that time frame with paper maps, and the maps are saying you're fucked. Hey, what did the map say? The map says we're fucked. <laughs> that see where like, he got the fucking yes. map, like just covering the whole backside of the van, was fucking hilarious. Yeah. It was genius. It was yeah. such a simple, simple fucking joke. But it also worked so well that, yes, you can see Freddy doing that just to be an asshole for no fucking reason except to be an asshole. Yep. And I was like, yes, that fits Freddy. I love that about him. Which, by the way, part uh, uh, part six was released on September 13th, 1991, and this was directed by Rachel Tullahay, the one that yep. you were talking about yep. that was part of thir- three, four, and five. She was part from part one. Oh, part one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from day one, she was a part of, you know, uh, from New Line and, you know, uh, a background producer, basically. First right. female director to do and, these movies. And uh, they went ahead and gave her the green light to go ahead and take the reins in yeah. part six. She loved the character, absolutely. She tried to do her best to show her love for the character. And I give her respect for that. I felt it was such a weak script, even though some, some of the comical and so, uh, you know timing was great. I thought the um, video game shit was funny, where he's like sitting in the boiler room playing on the video game. It was very corny. I but knew where it was going. It's a great graphics. I didn't enjoy it. I really <laughs> didn't enjoy it. It was different. Um, it, 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 like I said, it wasn't entertaining. The, it was... DeVito. You know, uh, that, you know, the drug induced scene. Yeah. I was like, okay. And then the cameo by John going. And then the cameo by Johnny Depp. Yes. Uh, which was great. Uh, you know, homage to, you know, uh, you know, part yeah. one and also to the time frame. I was like, this fits really well. Great for them. I'm happy for them. But overall, I was like, eh, but when he's, when he's sitting, when the amnesiac is sitting on the bed, in the bed, you know, uh, he's like, you know, fuck this. I'm not getting out of bed. Nope, I'm not doing this. And the bed catches on fire. It's like, fuck. <laughs> it just felt so real, yeah. so believable. I was like, okay, I respect the shit out of that. You know, the dude re- recognizes it's a fucking dream, and the dream is just trying to fuck with him. I, and, the, and the bed catches on fucking fire, and he has no choice but to get out. I was like, okay, this is. This is a really good meta storytelling. Yeah. This is like Deadpool level breaking fourth wall. Yeah. Recognizing shit's fucking weird, but doing it before anybody else is really doing that. I was like, all right, this is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Um, the black psychiatrist for Freddie said loved him. You know who he is, right? Uh, I've seen him in a hundred things. Alien. Yeah. He's one of them. Yep. yep. Um, he, he always did amazing his hair looked really fucking weird, though, for some reason. <laughs> the very low cut. The, just the, it, it, it felt like a wig. Am I, am I wrong about this? Uh, Crystal, what do you think? No, I don't think you're wrong. All I remember hair seeing him is with a bandana and a fucking uh, uh, bandana in uh, Alien. So, and he's also been in other horror movies. I've yeah. seen him in other horror movies. I just don't recall which ones they were, but I always just remember him from Alien. Yeah, he's been a, a, He was my favorite in Alien. It, 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 it was a very rushed production, but also the idea of, you know, Freddie has now successfully wiped out every child in Springwood. Um, and now he needs to have an opportunity to spread. You know, I'm like, okay, I can respect that. I no. can. 
and then the parents being kind of fucking batshit crazy after losing their children. I'm like, okay. All right. This feels like a logical step. All right. I can respect that. Roseanne showing up with Tom Arnold as her husband, but Roseanne showing up and like, oh no, I'll protect you. I'll hide you better. Oh yes. Come back to my house. You know that, yeah. that, that, yeah, this is when nest. Tom Arnold and Roseanne were uh, married. Yeah. That empty nest that they must be feeling as parents who lost their children. Roseanne sold it amazingly. You know, that, that, that insanity. I was like, okay, I can actually dig the premise of this. If they're going somewhere, this kind of works. Uh, but then now he has a daughter and all the other weird shit that goes along with it. I'm like, all right, that feels a little forced. Uh, you're, you're, you're really trying to shove some shit down my throat. And I'm not a big fan of that. All right. Just be a fucking natural. Take me out to dinner before you fucking throat fuck me. All right. Come on now. Um, you don't like it forced. Exactly. I, I, I want you to at least convince me that I want this before I fucking your, do it. You got to pet your head. Yeah. Tell them that you're pretty. Like I said, part six was very, okay. like I said, it's, it's, I think it's the, it's the least favored out of a lot of people. Yeah. Because of the way it just went. And then they completely turn the tables when it goes to the next one. Yep. Because this one, this was supposed to be the final nightmare. It was. It even had a 3D sequence in it that was... Uh, a because 10 minute long 3D horrible. sequence that did not fucking fit at all with yeah. the rest of the film. It, it, it didn't really add to it, but they did it because the 3D was technology was really high back in the uh, late 80s. You know, you had Friday the 13th Part 3. You had... Uh, um uh jaws 3d and then you had this little 10 minutes i think they had like a thing where you wear the glasses half like put glasses on and you get to watch the sequence i remember the dvd set even came with the little red glasses where you could actually watch it in 3d and stuff like that but it absolutely did and uh i i saw this in theaters i saw it you know when it releases a box set you know i i saw each iteration of this and i was like yep this is garbage each and every fucking time but they tried they fucking tried they end up killing Freddy again. Oh, yeah, this time. Well, that was the last time. line of the movie. Freddy's dead. Yeah, exactly. But they were riding the wave of, you know, the permadeaths of the killers of the time. Yeah. Um, that's what I was trying to sell it. Then they were able to finally convince Wes Craven to return to motherfucking Freddy Krueger. October 14th, 1994. Yes. New Nightmare. And the creativity behind this just blew my fucking mind. It was different because it reminded me of Blair Witch, where they used all the the same names of all the actors, Wes Craven himself, uh, even Robert England, and made them all act their roles of their personal, their their real lives, and made it to where Nancy was actually, uh, uh, what's the, uh, uh, Heather? Yeah, where it was actually her. And I thought it was very creative. It was very different. It still was, not my favorite, but it was still fucked up at the time because yeah. Heather Langkamp was actually going through a real life stalker right before Wes wrote, which is funny because that the whole movie has a whole thing about yeah, her being stalked. Exactly the fact that she was willing to come back and reprise this role as herself, even the father, and retelling the the, the trauma of dealing with a stalking you know, that she was having to deal with and then tell the story and film it. It was so meta. I was like, God damn, this is, this is fucking goddamn really fucking smart. But I'm going to, I'm going to say this flat out. I don't like the look of Freddie in this one. I understand. I, I dug it. I, 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 I understand a lot of people like, especially with the trench coat and the way that he looked and he looked more like hulking. He had Short more of the leather pants. Yeah. This was my favorite fucking Freddie. This absolutely was my favorite Freddy. Crystal disagrees. No, no, I'm not disagreeing. I disagree with the leather pants, but. <laughs> <laughs> so no, uh, uh, no, to me, this was no. the the, no, like the, the scariest <laughs> version of fucking Freddy. Uh, I would say scary. Well, also, you got to give you got to give credit to the kid because that kid. No, no I don't give credit. To that you kid. don't like the kid in that no, movie? That kid was very one fucking emotion. Well, they use him for a lot of horror beginning movies. to the end. He, he was very one-dimensional all the way fucking through. I give credit to Heather Langkamp maturing as an actress. I give credit to... No, her acting was a lot better in this one. Oh, fuck, no better. 
I give credit to everybody else that was around. I credit to Robert England. I give credit to really. I give a lot of credit to Robert England. Yeah, for embodying the the evilness that this new Freddy. But I like the fact that was. Wes Craven is basically writing this as the movie's yes, going. It was so creative and so fourth wall breaking. Would it, would it be fourth wall? Or would it be fifth wall? Or I mean, is there even a? It's fourth wall. Fourth wall because short of him looking straight at you while he's talking. He's referencing shit that's going on and getting ready to happen to the point of what the other actors and actresses are getting ready to say he has typed up on his computer. Yeah. Already. Um, so the only way it'd be any more, you know, breaking uh, would be if he looked right at the audience while it was happening. Yeah. Which I'm glad they didn't choose to do that because as amazing as Wes was, um, he wasn't an actor. He was a fucking writer. He was a, a fucking producer. He was a fucking But he, he, he seemed very realistic in the way that he yeah. was as so, a director. But to have somebody act and try to portray those emotions. Because he's he, acting himself. Yes. What he portrayed, the weird on 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 edge angst that he was able to portray, uh, did wonderful. But I think if he tried to make a sequel within a film and... and it would have just come off really fucking strange. What did you think of uh, Freddy's World, though? Because that one was really strange, especially with the pillars, like Roman pillars or something beautiful. like that. Fucking but it was something beautiful. different because you're so used to the boiler room. I would have kind of rather it been in a big no. boiler room. To create the scene, for what it was creating is a an evil entity that is being subdued by the oral retelling of scary stories. Yeah um going all the way back yeah you know you gotta think it's going all the way back to you know pre-greek pre-roman times so having his environment reflect that same type of scene i thought that really worked well especially with the greens and the reds coming from the umber lights uh, i was like this is fucking beautiful and you don't have people passing out while they're going through the reviews and listening to this stuff I thought, you know, you know, staying awake and paying attention would be really, really good. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's not me. That's him. What? You're falling Poor asleep. honey. You're just going hmm? to... You're straight falling asleep. Oh, was I? You were uh, asleep for a good 30 seconds. <laughs> that's all right. Your head just kept dipping. Going like dipping. this? What did, you think yeah. of, and dipping. what did you think of that fucking uh, doctor, the, the annoying uh, doctor that was like, uh the the black woman yeah yeah, yeah. She, no i i felt that she was doing her best she was doing her best child but they were making it worse for the child you know but, she but they didn't know put your, the child. yeah yeah but all right so put yourself in your parents position with her trying to tell you that your kid's not gonna fucking come home yeah no uh what, you know i understood everything and nancy every choice that nancy made i understood but i also sympathize with uh, the doctor she's like your child is obviously fucking wrong in the head right now yeah let's look out for your child are you showing your child your fucked up shit that you did um let's not cause them nightmares yeah but i think All the right. way she went about it was like completely- it priority one was the child's safety and well-being to, yeah. the, to the doctor and yeah and I respected that. I did. I know she was supposed to come off of this raging bitch and stuff like that at the beginning. But from day one, I give respect to the actress. She was playing it for concern for the child. And it, it read that way to me completely. What do you think, Crystal? She was a very odd lady, to put it simply. Yeah, she pissed me off. I wanted to fuck. Oh, yeah. No, completely <laughs> wanted to. Like, with the new job that I have. Is Any it, kind of stuff like that makes me want to like rip somebody's throat off because like listen to the but, kid. But if, you, sake. if you all were putting that posi- put in that position, would you act the same way towards her? So, no, I I understood a hundred percent where Nim, where Nancy was co- <laughs> yeah. where Heather Langkamp's uh, character was coming from. But I also understood hundred percent where the doctor was coming from. I really truly did. And did your balls hurt when you watch that yeah. scene where you see the fucking uh, claws coming up through the fucking thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, I was just thinking they, they, they retracted huh? into my the tummy. Seat? In the uh, in the tr- in the car seat where the guy was driving yeah. the uh, the where boyfriend of asleep. Heather, yeah, yeah. And he was falling asleep at the wheel, and you just see the claw coming up right oh, between yeah. his legs. 
I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, it's not gonna end well. I, I, it, it, that just made, that made me cringe a little bit. I was like, oh, I can just imagine the pain of that happening. And everything. You know what? So, all right. So we always talk about you know our balls, how it feels. How would the vagina feel? <laughs> So I love that you bring that up because off the top of my head, I can't remember the name of the movie, but there was one that I watched because of you guys and a dude's genitals gets completely fucking wrecked. Teeth? No. No. I giggled at all those because they were kind of funny. Yeah, it was. Like the crab eating the dick was just funny. That was funny. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of uh, the Grindhouse uh, movies uh, from Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez and the trailers, and you see the girl on the trampoline, and you see a blade go up, and she does the splits and lands right on the fucking blade. Yep. Mm. It's teeth all over again. (laughs) But this time for the women. But I will have to agree, when there is an extreme, extreme amount of damage done to the lower parts of a guy, I even feel it. It's like, oh, fuck. Uh, oh yeah, RoboCop. <laughs> mm, it's not when RoboCop shoots feeling. the the girl between the legs, and the guy's trying to rape her, and he just shoots her and just fucking shoots his fucking balls off. Remember that? Yeah, shoot him in the dick. There's well, actually yeah, a yeah, but he also he also shot between her between her uh, vagina. Yeah, but she didn't get hurt. Well, no, of course. If you he, want a good example, though, besides precision accuracy. Oh, well, that's true. But the heat could have cauterized the lips. Oh, she may have liked the warmth. Maybe. <laughs> Damn. There's two examples that come to mind for making a lady uncomfortable in those situations. Green Inferno. Yeah. The okay. lady yeah. in white, she is you know, about to have the genital surgery stuff. And then the 2007 girl next door. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> With the blowtorch. I yeah. watched that. Granted, that whole movie was f- fucked, but I had to pause it with that because I'm like, Please do not tell me you're about to use that on that girl. I use that for my fucking wood stove at the house. Please, no. no. <laughs> so yeah, no. Um, ladies get that feeling too. But all all together, you do have a point. This this movie is very well made. It's well yes. acted. Um, special effects are sparse. Special effects Super aren't good creative. though. I'm not gonna lie. The special effects sucked for 1994. Okay. I was a little shocked no, no, by no, that. No, no. the. No, don't do not do this shit because Bram Stoker's Dracula came out in 92. This the came out in 94, and the fucking no, special effects sucked. to the dragging around the room scene yeah. was fucking amazing. Yeah, but also the dropping into hell was fucking horrible. Yeah. Like, bad. But also, it was supposed to be a lot more figurative and a lot more, not, not even say spiritual, but uh, visually, like, holy fuck. It, it, was, it was meant to feel... That that level of disconnection because yeah. of where he, where the the entity is taking her, um, yeah. and I felt I felt that I succeeded. Like the, even the subtleness of the the red and green from the lights of the uh, on the, the towards the base of the pillars. Yeah, you know, uh, while she'd been covered in water and shit like that, it was a a very very intelligent choice. Yeah. It was like, okay, no, this this demon, this evil entity is so much in love with the idea of Freddy. It's also now bleeding into its own true environment. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, okay, okay, I, I can kind of really fucking fall for this. Hmm. I really can. Um, and this was shortly before Wes, you know, brings out uh, Scream. And once again, laying the entire horror genre, you know, franchises on its fucking head. Well, this was two years before Scream. Yeah. Yeah, but he already had, he was already starting to build upon that. He had a better, he had a better lineup of movies because, you know, when Iron Man Street came out in the mid 80s, uh, this came out in 1994. He already had a whole, he had Shocker, he had uh, People Under the Stairs, he had, uh, um, music of the night, music of the night, or something like that. It's a, a drama that he did. That's and just, would you argue any of them are actually great films? No, exactly. Vampire in Brooklyn is horrible, but it's fun. Exactly. He he has these financially, you know, stable hits. No, his, his, his I'd say his not good films. Critically, I think his best film to this day, and I think we did it in one of our last Halloween episodes was Scream. Scream is one of his best films by far. I would take Scream over Nightmare on Elm Street. I uh, I think critically last. I'm, house I'm on sorry, left, I do. I think last house on the left, last house on the left, is critically a better film than 
anything else Wes put out. Even Nightmare? Yeah. That, I would have never thought that from you. Just straight critically. It the the the, the angles, the, the the camera film, the the straight acting, everything about it was critically a a better choice than what Nightmare was put out. Yeah. Well then we uh we get to the fun one. Jason versus or Freddy versus Jason. Freddy versus Jason, which is directed by Ronnie Yu, who also directed uh, Bride of Chucky, which is yep. a great film, and also a lot of uh, um, you know f- foreigner films that he foreign films. This, yep. this was his second one, and uh, I, this was released on August 13, two thousand three. I saw this one in the theater. Same here, and yep. I was excited to hell about this movie. I thought this was a fun great fucking movie it's been long awaited ever since jason goes to hell from the early 90s it's been in development hell long much longer before that yeah no it's been it's been like a long time i just wish they got kane hotter for the role yep i i really wish they got kane hotter but robert england came back and i think he had the most fun with this role like i think this is what one bit huh i cannot blame him one bit i I mean it's just it screams to me enjoyment you know, uh, as a bad guy. Yeah. You know, the entire time. Once you get the makeup on, you're doing nothing but having fun. And that was one of his best looking makeup jobs is when he's like that demonized Freddy. Yeah. When it's all like the red and the fucking spiked ears and it's like red. Oh, man. It's fucking badass. But this to me is like Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth because Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth, Doug Bradley had so much fun he actually got to pull out of his character and actually be what he wanted to be yeah. instead of being a side character in the first and second film this is where freddie really just got to just rock it out say the fucking best lines in the movie he got to just, just really go for it and he got to fight off with what the the second best uh, why am i saying second best he's my number one best but i mean he got to fight off with fucking jason Voorhees, and it was long awaited and i'm still pissed off that they haven't made a freddy versus jason part two with fucking ash because i remember when that was in development too yep that was one of numerous sequels and that would have been a fucking amazing amazing sequel but freddy versus jason by far was just so I, had, I enjoyed freddy in that one they wanted to create an entire universe of versus um Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Yeah. Chucky versus Leprechaun. Um, they want to try to do Michael Myers yeah. in the bit, too. Yeah. I mean, they try to even get Leatherface. I mean, they, yeah. they try to make a whole bunch of verses. And I'm sure they did it in the comics. They made comics of all it these. Is. Yeah. But Freddy versus Jason, I think, is good directing. Bad acting still. But special effects were still pretty decent. But it was also released in 2000s when you think that New Nightmare came out in 1994. Yep. This came out in 2003. So there was a huge gap between that. And the fact that Robert England came back when how old he is and he still was better than ever. I thought this was his best acting as Freddy in all the movies combined. I, I don't know yeah. what you think about that. Not you, you probably don't agree with that, but that's how I think. I enjoyed Freddy in this than all the other ones. You guys are falling asleep. I'm good. Uh, Crystal, me and, me and Crystal are like no. high in energy here. I'm good. Yeah, your, your eyes keep closing. Yeah, I'm listening to you. <laughs> See, this is what responding. happens when you don't drink caffeine. Uh, New Line specifically bought the rights to Jason at the time. Yep. Just to make Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, what you said was like back in the early 90s. Because yes, Jason Goes to Hell came out in 1990, 91. One of those, yeah. I think so right after that came out is when they were able to secure the rights. Yeah. They have been trying since the late 80s to secure the rights. And the right holder at the time were like, nope, nope, ain't happening, ain't happening. But do you think it was worth the wait? Uh, I enjoyed it. I absolutely did. And I felt it did justice to both Freddie and Jason explaining the motivation behind both of them, why one, you know, Camp Crystal Lake, what, yep. and the other one is uh, Springwood, Ohio. Uh, and, but they eventually met up and kind of swapped for a year in order to continue to the, on the murder spree without getting caught. Now, yeah. All right, this is really fucking good. I appreciate it. I do because you don't know what the truth is and what the end is. You're just dealing with it the best you can one day at a time, and then all of a sudden, click. And now you are. <laughs> Chase has got his eyes closed. Ragnar's got his eyes closed. You're talking to the mic with your eyes closed. But I'm still talking. <laughs> yeah, but it just, it just looks funny because you guys, you hear Crystal going, 
when I'm communicating my thought process. You <laughs> are, and you're doing wonderful at it, and it's really cute, isn't it? And then they, they meet up, and... See, you, you notice how I woke up as soon as Jason started coming back in the picture? Yeah. <laughs> because that's my boy. I'm sorry. I love Jason. Oh, shit. That's yeah. adorable. But Freddy versus Jason is, yeah. to me, is a fun one, and... I don't know. You, oh, you, it should be a fucking fun one. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but most versus movie or movies that are like Alien versus Predator. People think that, although Chase fucking loves that movie. Fucking, but I it, mean. No. Five well, stars. AVP is a good He movie. gave it five stars. No, he didn't. Hey, I wasn't AVP allowed is on is that a good one. Movie, you have no though. idea what I have to say about AVP. It sucked. I love both of them. <laughs> well, Requiem is not bad. Yeah, that was that introduced one of my favorite versions of the Alien, but. AVP, the original, was pretty, pretty. But yeah, if you had to pick which is better, Alien versus Predator or Freddy versus Jason, what do you think is the better versus movie? You can't compare the two. Well, yeah, you can because it's, can. Two, I it's am, two. Yeah, I, I can definitely I compare the two, and I'm going to say Freddy versus Jason is a better film than AVP. Yes. I, I, if you want to try to compare the two, then Freddy versus Jason is better, but I don't think you can compare the two. And like, there, which it, one would you rather see? Daily or seasonal? We'll say daily. Daily? daily? Come on. No, knowing the outcome of every yeah. little fucking move? Yes. See, uh, that, that fucking scene, that fucking scene inside the cabin when AVP. she pulls him out. Oh, AVP? Yeah. I was just about to say the same with him. Yeah. But that scene when Freddy's pulled out of the dream, and, and he, then he just looks back, and he just sees Jason hulking. I get a fucking hard on watching that scene. And Seriously, because you see Jason like about to fuck yeah. shit up. And believe me, there's that nobody that loves lot. Freddy as much as I do. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> no, you're not gonna fuck me. I, he wants to fuck Jason. That's the whole point. I know. I love Jason. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, you do. And uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Kane. Freddy is Kane much better than any AVP. No, no, no. Hear me out. The reason I say that is because the same reason you picked your whole like my top five movies yeah. and your top five shows is I'm not always in the mood for. Freddy's banter. Uh, okay, see, I I would always be in the mood to hear Robert England talk shit to somebody. That's mm -hmm. the only reason I say that is because I I could be watching any of the Freddy movies any single day of my life. Yes, Freddy versus bitch. Jason. Let me handle this bitch. <laughs> oh, shit, exactly. Right I, there, I <laughs> that scene right there alone, and I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right, that's my motherfucking boy right there. <laughs> Did you see him? With his long-ass, insidious tongue? Yes. Yeah. Which will creep up somebody's fucking asshole, I'm guaranteed. Are you complaining? No, it felt If great. motherfucking guy in front of him wants to toss my salad, I'm letting him. You can go right ahead. <laughs> yes. Go right ahead. Mm. I, I'm Lick my anus, Freddy, and I will fucking enjoy it. I have one request. Better fucking stroke my dick while you're doing it. You can go ahead and you, you guys go in and That's enjoy that. That's rude otherwise. You, right? You guys go ahead yeah. and enjoy that. So here's the the last movie. So the remake. Yes. The piece of shit. Boring. I couldn't even stand it. I was getting bored and almost falling asleep okay, watching I, this movie. I give credit. I, I know you gave credit. That Jackie Earl Haley was not trying to be Robert England. He was trying to be Jackie Earl Haley. And I'm like, okay. Oh, no, and I told I you, I, 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 we, we were talking in a smoke break, and I agree with you there. Some of the visuals where mm. she is scooting her way down the aisle of the supermarket while flashing to the boiler room and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, this is a really, really cool visual. But then they relied so heavily on CGI, it angered me. Even um, on his face. Yeah. They had CGI on his yeah, fucking they, face. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm like, this is wrong. It just feels wrong just watching it. It and I, doesn't I, seem natural. And I didn't like the. I understand they were trying to go more realistic on his burning, the way that he looked. You know, the you know the lips all curled inside, and basically yeah. it looked more like a burn victim. But it didn't fit. It didn't work. Nope. It, the Freddy Krueger from the '80s worked a lot better. I, exactly. I'm, I will lie. I, I mean, I won't lie. Jackie Early is a great actor. He's an amazing actor. I mean, fucking Rorschach in yeah. Watchmen. Uh, so many other fucking movies yeah. that he's been When in. I heard they were making, I'm like, fuck them. How can they make a goddamn, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street? We're casting uh, Jackie Earl Haley. I'm like, that might work. 
Hmm, okay. But they relied a lot on his somebody's voice. Somebody's going to have to replace. That was the problem. You know, Robert Englund, and then that, that was that's a, goddamn that was Jack Earl Haley. I'm, yeah, that was a niche. Fight. Okay. Well, it's like Joker. There's some pretty big shoes to fill yeah. after. And Haley, he did his best to make it. It's his own Freddy. But they relied a lot on his voice, and they put a lot of deeper yeah. tone in his voice. And that it, it, there was a lot of uh, a lot of it wasn't one liners like, "Oh, um, why are you crying? I haven't even cut you yet." Yeah, I mean, just the way that he he talked more like a pedophile. Like he talked like yes. you know when he was in bed with the whatever. And chick. I think it would have been better if the suspicion of pedophilia was in the air. And but there was no proof, rather than them punching you in the mouth with it. Like, nope. Oh yeah, no. He's absolutely was a pedophile. Yeah, absolutely. The parents deserve to burn him. Um, that's why you know he's infecting everybody's brains. Blah 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 blah. I'm like, nope. I don't think he deserved at the time the punishment he got. He should have never had access to anything which could potentially three or four steps away influence anybody else yeah should have been solitary the rest of his natural born life and that's it hmm. well i like i said they they platinum dunes did these remakes they did a remake of friday the 13th which i thought i i enjoyed it's still not the best but i enjoyed it this remake sucked they also did the remake of texas Chainsaw massacre which lenny stands by that is one of his favorite horror movies of all time but this was very weak. I just, I didn't like the actors in it. I didn't like, although I do like one actor that's in it. I forgot his name. He also was in Highlander. He's, um, fuck, he's in so many fucking good movies. Uh, he was in Starship Troopers. Um, you know, the, um, uh, uh, the drill instructor in Starship Troopers, the one that threw his knife in the guy's yeah. hand. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I forgot yeah. his fucking name. I fucking love him. I know you're talking about. Yeah, he, he's an awesome dude. He's been in so many great movies, but uh, he played one of the fathers that... Because that's the one thing I enjoyed about the movie, the one thing I liked, even though Stu is falling asleep right now, is b- basically the whole ordeal where they show the whole background and how he gets burned up in the, uh, um, the boiler uh, eh. room. Yeah, you didn't like that? Of the the choices. The dream semen uh, really fucking threw me. Dream uh, semen? From uh, part six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the three fucking dream semen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nope, nope, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. You're going to make shit up. Um, I like the idea from New Nightmare of a evil that is being contained in the story that is being told. You know, f- you know, orally uh, from you know one group to another. Yeah, I thought it was all right, really fucking cool. Uh, nightmare, or not, not, not nightmare, but um, the remake. I was like, <sighs> they're trying to take ideas from different films and incorporate it into one. Well, they did that with Friday the Thirteenth. They did. They combined four films into Friday the 13th in the beginning. The first 15, 20 minutes was part one, two, and three. Well, not part one, two, three, and then into four. So this one... You would get mad, wouldn't you? I thought the remake was decent, but it's nothing like the original. Like, it's still part four. is still my standout. I I love part four, final chapter. But I, I don't really care for remakes of horror movies. I think that they completely fuck them up. It's very rare that they come up with a good horror remake. Like, Hills of Eyes was good. I thought yeah. that was a great remake. Yeah. The Thing prequel was good if they didn't stick to CGI. If they stuck out of the CGI, I thought it would have been a great film. Yeah. But this one, this is forgettable. Like, this is completely forgettable. This is at the bottom of the list, in my opinion. I it, When we get to our ranking, I think, I don't know if it's all yours, but we'll get into it. I mean, Crystal, did you enjoy it? See. No. Yeah, see, it, it's just, it's just not entertaining. It was boring and it, it was lame. And they tried to, it tried to go a lot on jump scares, and that's not yeah. what Freddy is. Yeah, there wasn't any jump scares in the first one. Too much CGI versus practical effects. Yeah, and that fucking yeah. wall shit behind yeah. the bed was horrible yeah. in the new one because you could tell how much CGI. I actually like the practical effect where you see the guy sticking his head through the wall, and you could see it. it I mean, it's practical and it looked better. But in the new one, you just see a CGI, like almost like the haunting type of thing. And it's like, it was fucking horrid. I hated it. Freddie yeah. fell victim to trying to make him more appealing to the generation. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's a good way for it. Yeah, that like is. my younger cousin probably adores the remake and hates all the older ones. And I 
I want to kick him across a football field, but that's a different story. Well, do you want to go ahead and jump in our pipe reviews? And I know you had a question. Yeah. No, actually, you know what? Before you do that, you said you wanted to talk about the uh, uh, the sequels that were supposed to happen. Yes. Okay. So here's where some different ideas of sequels that are supposed to happen. One was written and uh, proposed by uh, Heather Langkamp's on-screen father. And this was titled, um, How the Nightmare on Elm Street Began. That was the title of the film that he proposed. He proposed a film where it was set in the 70s, involved a copious amount of LSD, involved the Manson family. Charles Manson and the family actually killed all the children and set up Freddy Krueger for all the murders. Well, how many children were there? I think at the time there was like 17. Okay. I think in total, Freddy racked up like 40-some. 40, 40 but that's between life and death. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and they framed Freddy Krueger for the murders, and that's why Freddy was so pissed. Man, I had notes for that when I did my show last year. I had all the kills of all the slashers, mm-hmm. and I know Freddy was at the bottom of the list. Believe it or not, it was like 40 or 50 years. No, no, you, or something like that. But if you include what he did once uh, Freddy's dead happened and killing all the children of an entire fucking town and implied what that number was, that's an insane amount of number. I think it goes by on-screen deaths, though. I think that's where I mean, that list went by, yeah. yeah. Um, so what would you guys think about a movie, a prequel, where it's all set up by Charles Manson? An LSD, and Freddie actually didn't kill anybody while he was alive. Freddy I thought it would have been creative himself. I think it'd be neat. That'd be really neat. Ten thousand lives? No, about a million lives. Chess, you all right there? Okay. Um, another one uh, hey. that was pitched by Peter Jackson. Hey, he did some good good horror yes. movies. Um, yeah, Dead so, Alive. It, so. This was shortly after he made uh, Meet the Feebles and... Uh, oh, my God, the adult puppet yes. movie. <laughs> That's a crazy movie. All right, so his pitch was uh, it's a new generation of children in Springwood, and they hear the story of Freddy, but what they're all imagining is whatever fear is meaning the most to them so let's say somebody's afraid of snakes then you have a freddy snake somebody's afraid of spiders you have a freddy spider somebody's afraid of clowns you have a freddy clown um and so like that whatever the kid hears a boogeyman then that's the incarnation of freddy whatever they're most afraid of yeah um that's the pitch that jackson wanted to explore i would have a freddy stink bug a Freddy stink bug. Yeah, I have heard your yes. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and you know, this is before he made Lord of the Rings and everything like that, and all so. Well, out, but well, he's known for horror films. I yeah. mean, he did The Frighteners, he did uh, Dead Alive, he did. Uh, uh, there was another one, but his movies were really gory and very like over the top and very. It was that type of uh, New Zealand type of horror. Yes. Yeah. Um, but. That would have been interesting if he directed it, exactly. though. Exactly. You know, uh, 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 it, it felt to me like almost like a, a, Sam a Pennywise version of, of Freddy. Yeah. We're able to accept the different forms of whatever the childhood fears are. Right. Do um, you think it would have added a different uh, style? Yeah. It would absolutely would have, in my mind. Um, a more of a fan, fantastical element to it. Uh, the way that Peter Jackson able to tell the stories. Mm. And I thought that would be pretty cool, but that never panned out. Um, another one was a courtroom drama. What? Yes. Yes. Um, and this was uh, supposed to be directed by the same one who did uh, um, My Name is Sam based on... Um, my name is Sam. You talking about I am Sam? I am Sam or something like that. With Sean Penn? Yeah. What? Yeah, same director. Uh, uh, the, uh, the the adult that has autism and the young daughter? Yes. Yeah. I literally could not finish that movie. So they wanted to do... You a, don't go full retard. A 
a uh, courtroom drama, basically just retelling a, a prequel again to Nightmare, yeah. But retelling, uh, you know, Robert Eng- or Freddy Krueger's trial and so like that as a so a more drama. realistic approach. Yes. No. No. Exactly. <laughs> that, that would have been dog shit. Yeah. Uh, another one was a time where uh, this was the, after five. Um, everybody in town realized that Freddy's weakness and dreams is realizing you're dreaming. Yeah. And once you take control, then you take control. So for years now, all the kids would dream about Freddy just to beat his ass. Yeah. <laughs> and he would just constantly be getting his ass beat down for years until one kid kind of fucks up. And it allows Freddy to kind of kill him by accident. And that then starts spreading fear back throughout the town that this fucking, you know, this this limp fucking dog actually has teeth. And slowly Freddy regains power uh, because he accidentally kills somebody who was dreaming about beating his ass. He accidentally kills him. I was like... Okay, okay, that's kind of different, but I can kind of see that happening. I could, I could get behind that. Yeah, interesting, interesting takes. That's uh, a, that's a lot of. Uh, and there's another one. Oh, all right. So one Freddy's more. dead. All right. So same generalized premise. One more serious. Um, one there is no Freddy's daughter. Okay, the amnesiac is actually Jacob from Dream Child, okay? But he's an adult now, or closer to an adult, you know, late teens. He has amnesia, and so he gets, you know, same falling in the head. You know, Freddy's still fucking with him. Um, weirdness, doesn't know what's going on. But then they introduce what they call the Dream Police. And the Dream Police are all of uh all the big heroes the big you know uh, people from the previous films that freddie has taken and their goal is to try to weaken freddie uh in any way they can so it's kind of a roundabout story of all of his time and he's having to go against these fan favorite characters you're going against nancy you're going against alice you're going against fucking joey and kincaid you're going against all these fucking people um, who are now fucking dead, but are doing what they can to weaken Freddy as much as fucking possible so that he has a chance to be taken to the real world and finally truly destroyed. Um, and it, it, it would have told that true beginning to end roundabout story, uh, in order to justify Freddy's death, you know, the way that it actually paid off. It would still been the same general plot beats, but, told from a slightly different angles what would you guys have thought about that no i i don't think it would have been any better to tell you the truth the dream police idea i don't think that would have panned out because in everything else you see he's collecting the souls i feel like it's almost dream and they, but they ago. they escape their way out and are fighting against him in the after death it, it equals leaves, it leaves out, plot though. holes yeah See, I, I thought that would have been a good bookend to the story. I, I thought of all the pitches of, of the sequels that didn't happen. I'm like, this right here is actually one I would kind of really wanted to see. I would have liked to see fucking Nancy fighting against him, Kincaid fighting against him, Joey fighting against him, uh, Alice fighting against him, Dan fighting against him, all of them doing what they can while the dream world's happening, fighting against him. So while the living worlds happen, then you have this group, you know, this new group, you know, doing what they can to that way. And it would have shown, you know, a, an honoring of everything that happened before until what's happening now. Uh, it would have been a good bookend to Freddie actually dying, uh, with the help of the ones that he, he took before. That would have been, it would have been interesting, but I don't know. I don't think it would have worked. I think they should have left it off at. I, sh- I think they should have left it off at part three, to tell you the truth. Left it off at three? Mm-hmm. There's so much more to no. tell. Though. I think they should win a part three and then skip four and five and go to the new nightmare. No. Yeah, well, that's what I believe. I, I'm Part six was just stupid. I, I, I just, it's not a, it's, it's not, 
there's maybe one or funny things in it here and there, but really it's just it's a lame Freddy Krueger movie. It, it is to me. That's why it's the bottom of my ranking. It's just not okay. It was not enjoyable. You you ready to get to the pie reviews? Um, I want to hear uh, order everybody's you know uh, films. I want to hear pint reviews on part one. And I also want to hear everybody's first introduction that I remember to Freddy. And top five kills. And top oh, five kills. Shit. Come to Freddy. All right. So we are going to go ahead and start our long pint review. So you got multiple your first, questions. Your, your first and uh, your first uh, Freddy movie, like the first movie the you first saw time Freddy, Freddy interview. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right. So, first one came out in '84. Yeah. Yep. Obviously, I didn't see it then. So, I want to say, I don't, oh, man, I don't know. I know what you're early, early '90s. I want to say is when I uh, probably first started watching Freddy, and then um, you recall which movie it was. So. I want to say it was maybe Freddy's Dead. Wow. Is when I maybe, maybe got introduced to, to uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm, I'm with you. I'm the same. That, that was the first one that I saw. Uh, is yep. around that time. And then I got, it, then, then I got intrigued into um, figuring out the rest of his story is of uh freddy's story yeah you know so i started you know so it would be i can't give an accurate detail of it but i want to say maybe freddy's dead since that was in uh 91 maybe around that time maybe maybe you know what was cool about freddy's dead is that the end credit scene is showing all the death scenes all at once like in a whole long montage yeah that was and beautiful. that's how that's that what, was, and what was cool about that one was that was supposed to be the end all be all. Yep. Of Freddy. And then they had then you know, the idea of Jason and Freddy came in the idea of well, who's fucking better right. with it. You know, so then Jason got revamped into his last death scene where uh Freddy's claw came up. And then pulls Jason's yeah, and then pulls Jason's mask down into hell. Oh, that was another one a film that I sequel idea that I didn't remember to pitch. What? So one of the earlier ideas of Freddy vs. Jason was Assassins for Hell. I remember hearing about that one. Well, that's weird. Yeah, so both Freddy and Jason are dead. Right? Yeah. Um, devil basically gives them an opportunity. Whoever can go up and collect the most bodies gets to return to Earth. The other one, you know, suffers for eternity in hell. Jason would have won. That's that's a because Jason had more that's, kills than that's Freddy an altogether. One. Huh? That would be interesting. Yeah, but Jason would win because Jason has more kills than Freddy. Way more that's kills. He has more films. But if you include all the shit that wasn't done on screen. Freddy literally wiped out an entire fucking city's worth of children. Uh, yeah, he but- wiped out an entire fucking goddamn town's worth of fucking children. So much so they're afraid to repopulate it. To the point, even in in uh, Freddy vs. Jason, where they fucking goddamn are afraid to even talk about him to the point where they send anybody who has the single inkling about him off to a fucking insane asylum. To no longer have dreams. Jason still brings her supreme. No. Yeah. I think Freddy actually, in the yeah. real world, has a higher body count. Jason still brings her supreme. Which oh. episode's longer? Hmm? Which episode's Ooh. longer? Oh, come on. You can't go into that shit. Hey, if you're going to sit here and say he's supreme. I didn't make the decision to go every single fucking movie for like 20 minutes choice. for a movie. That was your choice. You you didn't you I remember you saying oh, we gotta get I gotta get going I gotta go, I gotta go home I gotta get home to to uh, and Harley and you could have said fuck you all right and <laughs> fucking mail the show mm, you, whatever it was your choice all right fine you you want to play that shit wait till we get to my I'm Terminator just, episode okay just wait oh just, yeah your fucking Terminator episode yeah you think you're really able gonna pull this amount of time out of the Terminator films we will see okay we will see okay what are your top five kills. 
<laughs> oh shit! Oh, um, all right. So it ranges, uh, somewhat, a little bit, not really. Uh, Primetime bitch in Freddy Three. Yep. All right, that one there was cool. It was funny. Um, Jennifer. Yeah, she wanted to be an actress, and that was her her niche into uh, primetime. Yep. They were also so. fucking mean to her before before that too. Stop the prime time, bitch. <laughs> he loved the word bitch. He did. <laughs> it, <coughs> so his fucking tongue in every goddamn episode, in every fucking show, it just got bigger and badder and longer and yeah. nastier. I'm mad. And, and that was his thing. That was his thing. Like, if he wanted to violate you, he just wanted to fucking suck face and stick his tongue down your fucking throat. It was <laughs> it was hilarious. Especially the last one when uh, when he had Jacob, he fucking stuck the uh, hit the knife in between the fucking tongue. Yep, he split it. In oh between hell yeah! The uh, the fork tongue now. Yeah. Yep. You know, which was always funny. I thought it was funny as shit. Uh, the cockroach in Freddy Four, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I I thought that was there was very uh, very fitting. And then, uh, oh, man, ripping Freddy apart in Freddy 4. Okay. And shit, with all the, with his souls. The tiny arms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with his souls that he had collected. What, they had what? enough of, they had enough of his shit. What? I'm just curious what your next two are. Keep going. God damn, dude. No, I'm just. <laughs> he was going he was to. chomping at the I, bit. I, I know. No, I, I'm just a little. I'll, yeah, I'll say it when your I get to mine. Is about mine. <laughs> go, go ahead. And then uh, the boyfriend in the beginning of uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. When he gets, he gets uh, folded in half. When he gets smushed. Oh, yeah. Yep. That was. Yeah. I, I thought that was a. I, was, I, I thought for a Freddy movie, that was a great move. That was a great kill. And then uh, the last one would be uh, when Freddy dies in Freddy vs. Jason. Okay. Oh, when he gets stabbed by his own claws from uh, Jason? Yeah. 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 That was pretty but cool. But he doesn't die. He doesn't. He doesn't. He, but you don't. Yeah, he winks an eye. He, yeah. At the very end, yeah, you know, when it leaves you a little fucking, yeah. you know. He, he literally a got a bag out of me. <laughs> For but it. he still fucking so, winks at you. He's like, oh, this ain't it, bitch. Yeah. So that's mine. All right, so what is your ranking from best to worst? Oh, son of a bitch. Nine films. Oh, fuck. God, I hate you so goddamn much. Although Chase, Our worst to best. Chase is going to be middle right, to Chase is going to be eight to films. End, you know, whatever. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, worst to best. We're going to go with worst to best. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to go with number one in this order. So the original. Friday is, or, uh, worst to best? That's the worst? You think Nightmare on Elm Street? No, I'm or, sorry. Uh, best word. Best worst. Best, best worst. worst. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, my heart was like, "What? <laughs> oh my god!" <laughs> no, best worst. Best worst. All right. So the first one will be uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the okay. original. Okay. All right. It set the precedence, I believe, for uh, these type of, for this type of film, and the subsequent films that. Came after it. all the B, C, D rated movies. Yeah, that all happened afterwards. And then uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Okay. Uh, okay. So all right. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not judging of this. I, I Freddy vs. Jason because I love. It's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. Okay. Because you have two iconic characters in cinematography. It is. Yep. And there, you don't ever really get to see that kind of battle unless you're doing like a fan film. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a solid B movie. Yeah. Like Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, it's it is it is. I wouldn't out and I wouldn't put that as a. Uh, I saw this movie as a breakup movie. <laughs> so I remember you told me the story yeah. about this. So like it's 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 I. 
I have nostalgia for it. Okay. <laughs> What's your number three? <laughs> oh, wow. Number three, we're going to go with uh, number two. Number on Elm Street 2. Okay. All right. Um, and then after that, we'll go to number three. Okay. All right. Wow. Oh, man. And then we're going to go with uh, Freddy's Dead. No. We're going to go with uh, Wes Craven. New Nightmare? Yep. Yeah. New Nightmare. Right. And then Elm Street 5. Big and then Kyle. 4. Dream Warriors. Six. Or four is not Dream Warriors. That's freaking uh, um, Dream Master. Right? Dream Master. Dream Master. Best theme song by far. Yeah. Part six, Freddy Dead. Freddy's Dead is part six. And then the reboot is very last. Did you put five in there? Huh? He did. Yeah. He got all nine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what is your pint reviews for the original? The original? All right. Uh, enjoyment, four and a quarter. Wow. Because for what it did, it set a good precedence for fucking around with people and letting you know if you're what if uh Michael Myers or Jason is your, you know, your your slasher flick or, flick or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um this one here lets you know that they may see you in person. This one lets you know that you're not safe in even in your own dream. Uh, critical? Uh, man. About a three. Okay. I agree with that. I hated the alley scene in the very beginning. With the long arms? You I really hated it. I remember it you was, telling me yeah, that. Yeah, I it was that. over the top. It, it did, didn't it let was you. Stupid! I don't think it needed to be there. They set the joking tone way too fast in the movie. I think, yeah. I think if they were gonna do something like that, right? My it, God, it, I am God. Yeah, yeah. It, right. it could have been, do, been. It could have been done. I understand a at little least bit. A quarter late. of the way through, I, let I, us start I seeing how, some humor. How cheesy it could be seen now. But trying to put yourself in that mentality of the early 80s and the special effects you're seeing. But and we don't do that now. I, I'm trying to be respectful of what they had available at the time. I'm being well, respectful they, of they, they, what our enjoyment is story. for. I know. They even said on multiple documentaries that they thought that this would be work like horse shit. No, you said enjoyment was four and a half. Yeah. Yeah. They they said the... Yeah, yeah. the well, they said... The long arm oh, no. scene would be, well, you know, look like shit. It'd be garbage. And nobody thought it would work. And then once it's all the dailies, once it showed up, they're like, holy fuck, this goddamn is fucking weird and freaky as fuck. Yeah, but there's holy one thing. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I, I laughed at the part when after that scene, you just see him running and he's going like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. That absolutely. was, that was too much for me. <laughs> I, I was laughing at <laughs> the fucking way he's fucking yeah, running. No, keep in mind, when, when they're doing that scene, <laughs> the people... That are controlling the arms are literally standing on the roofs of the buildings on either side of that alley. Yeah, with the all right, strings. and they're, they're like the little. This hey, uh, but you know what? I will give all a critical right. view that like, there was no what? strings. Hey, you know, I give them fucking credit. All right, and, and there was no. You couldn't see the strings. <laughs> yes. No, you didn't. No, no. That that no. was that was good critical right and there. And if I saw that motherfucker in a goddamn alleyway, I am running. <laughs> I am running as. Fat as my fat motherfucking legs can carry me. All right. Until I need. All right, you got me. You got me, which is like a block, if that. All right. All right. So I guess I'll go to mine. So um, uh, this was this was interesting. All right. Well, the first time I saw Freddy was uh, Freddy 6. Um, Freddy's dead, believe it or not. Wow. I saw it on TV. I remember watching it on TV, and then I remember seeing On the, TV, Freddy Six? Yes. Okay. No, it was on uh, um, Cinemax. I remember it was on Cinemax because it was one of those free uh, weekends you get Cinemax for free, so oh, I got I, to see it. I understand. And I remember seeing the montage at the end with all the killings, and it made me want to see all the other movies. Yep. So then I was on a hunt to check out the other movies and see them whenever they came on and stuff like that. Um, I believe I saw... Um, um, part five or part four next or something like that. But, and then I started going back to the earlier stuff. But, uh, if I were to give my, um, the top five kills, 
Uh, part four is Debbie turned into a cockroach and smashed. That that was fucking awesome. I thought I thought the whole thing about her bending her arms backward and then yeah, turning into a good. cockroach and then being squashed in the um, Roach Motel and just seeing the fucking goo that was badass. I fucking loved it. Uh, part f- uh, for my second one would be the death of Freddy. Really, the death of Freddy in part four when he's torn apart by the uh, souls. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. You see the top of his head just get ripped off. You see all these hands coming out, and he's just being torn apart. I thought that was a great fucking death for Freddy. I think that was his best death in every single movie. So that was really cool. Um, part my n- Number three would be part five, Dan turning into the motorcycle. I thought that was really badass and metal. Seriously, just seeing him speeding and you see his fucking face, like he becomes a part of the motorcycle. You see the um, the uh, t- you know the uh, the wires and all that going through his legs and his feet and everything. It was just really cool. Uh, my fourth one would be Tina in part one in the ceiling when she's being torn all around the room, and you see the claws going down her chest. And the way they did that is, you know, one of those rooms that turn around to make it look like she's on the ceiling. I thought that was a great special effect. It looked really cool. And they did do a redo in the remake with that, and I hated it because she was being torn apart. And I understand they made it more, but I actually enjoyed her just being, like, tumbled all around the room better. The practical effect worked better for me than the remake, where she was being actually, like, torn, like, like going back and forth in the room. Uh, my uh, last one would be the uh, welcome to primetime, bitch. That, that's iconic right there. You just see that. You just see him just t- taking her and just sticking her head right in the fucking TV, crashing through. Great fucking scene. I thought those were uh, my favorite top five death scenes. Now my ranking. Yeah, I know you're gonna. You're curious about this one. My number one's Freddy versus Jason. I'm sorry, because I am a Fre- I'm a Jason fan. I'm sorry. The I am Yuri in Stu's eyes he, right now. Yeah, but you are a Freddy fan. I'm an I mean, or you're a Freddy fan. I'm a Jason fan, and seeing Jason go against the guy that I fucking hate because I'm not a big Freddy fan. I enjoyed that. It was fun. I enjoyed the hell out of that movie. I thought it really pressed on the lore of both characters in that one movie. I thought it was funny. I thought it was horror graphic. It was great. No, but I get better here. It gets better. Then I would pick. Dream Warriors is my number two because I thought that was a very enjoyable, was one of the most enjoyable of the classic Freddy films. I enjoy, although the characters were kind of lame, especially with the fucking punk chick with her hair that's like two inches long or two feet long. She is beautiful and bad. Yeah, that, that's a bad line. So, so I mean, her death was good with the fucking syringes and everything, and the fucking wizard. I, I don't know what it was, but he had like huge fucking shoulders. It was just weird. The uh, handicapped wizard dude, but uh, it's a cape. But it looked fucking yeah, huge. Sort of on him. It just and fun. that's the way pads, he patrolled us. It, it just didn't look good. But other than that, it was still an enjoyable film. And he would have kicked your ass. Whatever. And storyline was a whole lot better. I enjoyed well, Dream Warriors. Magic bitch. And I enjoyed that fucking song. The fucking eighties uh, hair metal band song worked out great. For my part three of uh, best to worst. I would have to go with the original Nightmare on Elm Street. I will still pick that one as number three. It's a classic film. It's classic horror. It's not comedic. It's actually tried to be more scarier. It's of that time of the early '80s when they were really when horror is really like coming out of its 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 reign. Basically, when they were just making horror film nonstop, month after month after month. So many fucking horror films. That's the movies I love. '80s horror. Uh, for my number four would be New Nightmare because I thought that one was very creative and I thought it went really well. I would see that as a trilogy with one, three, and New Nightmare. Um, I thought it was creative. I thought it was really cool how they added basically having the actors who portray the roles play the roles. I didn't like the look of Freddy. I know you guys all did, but the whole I, I enjoy the old school Freddy. I don't enjoy the the, uh, the trench coat and the, the new face and it just didn't work out for me, but it was still a very creative, well done film, and it's a great addition to the saga. Um, then I would have to go with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Four. Um, it, it had some good kills, bad writing, but it had good kills, and I thought that it had some entertaining kills. Part Five is my next one, and that one was boring. Not, not as it's just not as good. It, I mean, I understand they were trying to extend on his whole story and everything else with the you know uh the dream child and you know the uh all that the born of a hundred a hundred maniacs and stuff like that it was different but still not my go-to uh then i would pick part two i i i I can't stand that one i i think that one's bad i don't like it it's it it was 
to me, a lame sequel. I'd pick part three over a better sequel than the original, in my opinion. I wish they kind of just skipped two and went to three. Um, and then I would go to part six, Freddy's Dead. Um, it had some funny parts in it, but I, would, I didn't see it as a horror movie. I saw it as a comedy. I saw it as a comedy horror. I wouldn't even fit it as straight horror because it just got redundant and stupid, in my opinion. I mean, there were some, you know, funny scenes here and there, some entertaining scenes, seeing Freddy do his, you know, his his one-liners and stuff like that, but it just didn't work for me as much. And then the last one on the list is the fucking remake. The remake was just straight out fucking boring, and I hated it. I just did not care for it at all. It was just stupid, and I would never watch it again to this day. I will watch all the other ones, probably not till like 10 years from now, but the remake I will not watch. I, I just can't stand it. So if I were to go for my pipe reviews for the uh, for the original, uh, Stu's going to hate this one. Um, I'll go Critical first. Critical is three. It's a well-made horror film. It's uh, it's really done well. Wes Craven did a great job in it with the uh, um, the talent that he had, you know, doing Deadly Blessing, doing uh, Last House on the Left, Hills of Eyes. It was a great, a great character that he made. He started the whole Freddy Krueger phenomenon, and I think that he did a good job doing it. The, the movie was a good horror film, and of that time, it was scary. I mean, to people nowadays, it wouldn't be. But back in the early 80s, of course it's going to be scary, just like Friday the 13th was scary and Halloween and stuff like that. Enjoyment? Two and a half. It's at the halfway point. It's just, like I said, it's not a one. It's not anything. It's right at the halfway point because it's not my go-to. I Like I said. That doesn't have your zombie mongoloid. Exactly. I, I, I understand why you go... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how I, I see it. I, I just, it's not my favorite. I mean, oh, I will watch bad. it again. Hey, he has better kills than Freddy, in my opinion, and he's tougher than Freddy. Freddy is a fucking pussy, and he lost in Freddy versus Jason, in my opinion, although you keep saying that both of them had a fair point in winning and losing or whatever. They both lived. Neither one fucking won. We don't know. Other than him winking his eye. What do you mean? We don't know. He fucking looks at the camera and winks his fucking eye. How are you saying that's not fucking a goddamn fucking Freddy Friday? lost. Jason got turned into a fucking fleshlight. Or uh, Freddy got turned what? into a what? fleshlight by Jason, all right? Did she just say fleshlight? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Shit. Took that head and just... Oh, my God. That's if that fucking goddamn limp dick fucking zombie is able to fucking get anything up. Oh uh, yeah, so uh, I, but hey, I like I said, I'm not getting <laughs> I'm not giving Nightmare on Elm Street like a one or zero. It, it's a it's at the halfway point. I will give it a halfway point. And the critical, it's critically better than my enjoyment because it is a well made horror film of that time. So that is mine. Crystal, it's all you. Alrighty. So when were you first inter- uh introduced to uh Freddie? Well, see, the only one that hadn't come out before I was born was the remake. <laughs> so I had my pick of all of them. <laughs> Shit. Um, so actually, I was introduced on accident to Freddy scrolling through HBO. And it was the third one. Dream Warriors. Yes. Uh, I was about halfway through the movie, and it was the... It was the part where Joey screams no. Mm-hmm. Yep. I distinctly remember that, because I was like, what the fuck am I watching? So that was my first introduction to Freddy. Um, absolutely loved it. And then I actually Busting went and, those mirrors. And then I actually saw the remake in the theater. And <laughs> Chase often asks why I don't go see movies in theaters. It's because it's a waste of money, and that's what solidified it for me. Yeah. Um. So Freddy k- killed. I guess we could all agree that the the remake sucks. We can all agree that. I mean, Chase can't. Look, I will show it to him, and he will agree. It's number it, it's at, know, number nine. He on may the list. put it at number one. <laughs> he might. I'm sorry. The way that he reviews movies, <sighs> that is that is that 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 might be the case. Oh my god, the special effects were amazing. <laughs> we were watching these movies, and he was like, you know, so far, I think number two is great. And I'm like, okay. Objectively, number two. It was. I- I told you that while I was watching it, we were 15 mi- minutes in, and I was like, you know, it's not too bad so far. And you go, well, now it turns out like shit. I'm like, that's fine. I haven't seen the whole thing yet. It might. Right now, it's not too bad. We had that conversation three fucking times. <laughs> yeah, the power of love will kill Freddy. What's your top five kills? It does. 
<laughs> it does. It's one of the ways. Power of true, true love's kiss does kill Freddy. Yep, and it irks the fuck out of my soul. So, in no particular order, um, the hearing aid. That's a good one. Oh, that was fun. That was a good one. <coughs> That's a strong yeah. one. So, for somebody with sensory issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that whole scene played. His head exploding was good. Fucking yeah. goddamn beautiful. Yeah. Um, Tina. From the first one, yep. Yeah. That's that's the classic. I'm just I'm really surprised nobody's picked Johnny Depp yet. The next one is Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. And it's really because like okay. you don't see any of the murders, but I want to know what the fuck happened to him to cause the fucking waterfall of blood. Okay, um, so some weird shit happened while filming that actual scene. The room broke. Yes. It did. It legit fucking broke. It was supposed to go up the walls and all that shit, and they just it, it didn't flip. So they they used the same you know rotating room they did for Tina's death. Yeah, and, I remember seeing this in the documentary. Right. But they just filmed it upside down, yeah. and you know re you know re did it, and, so they, and they dropped like five hundred gallons worth of fucking blood. Then the blood, so much weight, fucked up the goddamn you know. uh waiting of the fucking room was upside down and the room started fucking moving by itself and there was no way for them to fucking stop it oh, shit. yes because it was too much fucking weight on the bottom of the fucking goddamn upside down room and they could not control it any fucking more so they got it all in one fucking take and how fucking weird it was uh and they could no longer control the room from spinning People got hurt because of f- trying to f- hold this shit fucking still, oh, shit. and they could not fucking handle it anymore. And I'm like, this is fucking really fucking genius. It actually, well, uh, wow. almost death yeah. to the point of death. Yeah, um, electro people wow. were getting electrocuted because the room was rotating and it, was, it started fucking hitting wires. Well, that light fixture in the top of the yes. ceiling that was actual like a light. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. So all that blood was going onto a a power live light. fucking line. Shit. Yeah, people were getting electrocuted. The room was fucking spinning out of control. Uh, shit like See, that. I just imagine like mass chaos when it is. this is going on. It is considering uh, water weighs nine pounds per gallon. Yeah, just water. Uh, blood. Uh, the, what they use is thicker than what they use for water. So you're probably looking at it closer to thirteen to fourteen pounds per gallon, uh, uh, roughly. All right, and then you had five hundred gallons of it hitting the floor as quickly as possible uh and then that weight just throwing the center of balance of that room isn't that, 40, yeah. isn't that like 4500 or something like yeah. that uh and then that just you know shit and nobody what trying people trying to hold it back while getting electrocuted while getting fucking hurt all right i'm just like this is fucking amazing what's your number four um philip's death the um tower suicide where he's okay. got the yeah, um, yeah, the marionette. Oh, that yeah, the puppet scene. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the last one is the cockroach. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Cockroach is an awesome scene. That, that was a really fucking great scene. Yeah. Um, so. <sighs> You're ranking. I'm really curious. Mm-hmm. So we've got Dream Warrior because that was the first one I saw. Okay. As best or worst? Best. Okay. Again, I. I'm trying to figure out this, what order you're going now. I think everybody's going best to worst. Look, I'm not. If, if I if I was doing worst to best, you would hear remake come out of my mouth. I'm just confirming because <laughs> mentally I am going worst to best. I tried, I tried, but it hurt. Um, Goot did that on Friday the Thirteenth, and it confused the hell out of me. Yeah. So next is the You're new nightmare. Confused? Yes. Yeah, shut the fuck huh? up. New nightmare. That's number two. Number two. Yes. Okay. 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 Mainly just because of like how Nancy's character, like seeing yeah. oh, seeing I, them break down into their actual roles. With I can write more respect. Um, and then after that is number two. Okay. Freddy's Revenge. Then we've got Dream Master followed by Child. Okay. And then Freddy's Dead. Then Freddy versus Jason, and then the remake. Wow. Where's okay. Where's the original? The okay. original, uh, number one. In the middle. Yeah. I didn't hear you say that one. Oh, I didn't. Shit. You didn't. I, it's uh, shit. I wrote all the numbers and then I wrote down the fucking names. It's it's supposed to be right there above Dream Master. So oh. Revenge one and then Dream Master. 
Okay. 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 Yeah, because I, I thought you were going to put that. Like, I, I didn't hear that when I was like, man, is that going to be all the way at the bottom? Yeah. No, sorry. I have it over here with like one, two, four, like all the numbers. Yep. And then I wrote out their names. What are your pint reviews? So for the pint review for number one, critically, three and a half. Okay. Mm-hmm. So far, we're all in the threes on that one. And the only reason I'm giving it a three and a half, not a four, is because there are a few little tiny things that could have been better. Granted, they did do that better in like the other ones. Yep. Just- yeah. No, we're, we're, we're critically <laughs> reviewing number one. Mm-hmm. And then for enjoyment, it is definitely 4.5. Okay. I could watch the first one over and over and over. So four and a half pints. Mm-hmm. All right. No. So that you you two are similar on that part. Yep. For enjoyment. Okay. That's good. Now, I was I, expecting a five the way that you. If I was pint reviewing all of them, got to be five. Just I, the first one, though. Okay. Chase, it's all on you, buddy. <laughs> all right, I'm awake. Let's do this. Wake up, Chase. All right. Um. So my top five kills. Well, well when were you first introduced to uh, Freddy? Yeah. Um. The my, remake. A week ago. No. Uh. She. Didn't she didn't remake, so. He's been dating me for longer than three years. It wasn't. Yet, it wasn't last week. But he didn't know a remake even existed, according to him, until four hours ago. We do not talk about the remake. You gotta stop moving that. Thing. You failed to. We're sharing a mic. How am I gonna him. not move it? I did. <laughs> you bend down. Huh? I did. According to Chase, you failed to let him know that there was a remake. When I purchased all the movies and went through my hunt to find them all, I informed him there was a shitty 2010 remake. Okay. <laughs> Any whore. Uh, I'm selective about my whore. Thank you very much. So when when were you introduced? What was it about a year ago when we started watching them together? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw my first one in like ninety, ninety one. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, what the fuck, man? It was that funny hurts. about that. Is I actually heard about the movies when I was like, oh god, just uh, I don't know, ten, something like that. This is why I get headaches. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I've had a, like a headache. No, no, you, you'll you actually like this. <laughs> you'll actually like this. Uh, so I heard about this horror, horror story or horror movie while at camp. Seriously, oh, at camp? 100%. <laughs> really? <laughs> this one time, a band camp. Shut up. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, but yeah, Crystal uh, introduced me. And my top five kills are number one, Dan's motorcycle. Yep, it was fucking awesome. The uh, the, the overdose for Mohawk chick. Oh, on part three, Dream Master. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Dream Warriors. Yeah. Number three is the marionette. Okay. Followed by Glenn and the Blood Geyser, and five has to be the corpse taco. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, Freddy versus Jason. Exactly. Yeah. You know he never spilled that beer, right? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> At what you call a professional. Exactly. <laughs> That'd be a motherfucking party foul. And he's also a douchebag. Raking from. Oh my oh. god! I was so glad he died first. That's why I was glad. I oh was yeah. Happy he died. It was so much satisfaction. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, don't make me don't don't make me tell you twice. Yeah. But don't make I me ask you twice. Ask you twice. I'm pretty sure she dug the shit out of that. Yeah. He was giving to oh, her she did. what oh, she absolutely. sexually needed. What is your ranking from? I'm not judging. Best to worst. Number one, Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one. All right. You have to pay homage to the original, the OG. Um, it set a good tone. It had its flaws, as any movie does. But I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the next one is... A new nightmare for me. It was a really well... I think it was a better orchestrated rendition of what Wes wanted it to be. Yeah. And we've talked about it before. I really like when a movie shows a a slightly more possible or slightly more realistic rendition of, of horror. Yeah. And that made an effort to take it from, yeah, we recognize that we've been, you know, breaking the fourth wall in these movies 
and it's been goofy, and now we're going to take it into real life yeah. and w- make it feel like that. And I enjoyed that. I, yeah. I did. Um, the uh, next one on my list is Dream Warriors. Uh, then, so you basically go for the whole trilogy for the first three. Right. Yeah. Um, then Freddy v. Jason. Okay. Um, Freddy's Revenge. Mm. Dream Master. Mm-hmm. The Final Nightmare. And then the Dream Child was absolute dog shit. Um, as far as my critical, I'd have to give these a... Oh, you're talking about just the first one? Yeah. Um, yeah, the first one. I'd have to give the, th- the first one a three and a half because... For critical? Yeah. Okay. Um, It was put together well. It was a brand new concept at the time. They did a great job with what they had. And, I mean, obviously it made a, a fucking box office killing. Yeah. Um, the enjoyment rating, I can't say it deserves a, a full four, but I will go 3.75. And that's your number one. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I can see that. That's fair. What do you think, Stu? I'm okay with it. Okay. I'm good. So did I, did I you know, disappoint you all thoroughly? Uh, by passing out and being asleep for half the episode. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, go ahead and close this out, bud. Okay. Uh, My first interaction with the venerable Frederick Charles Kruger um, was Dream Warriors. It was probably about 88. I was probably six years old. HBO uh, was playing it. Six years old? Mm-hmm. Uncut too. Yep. Wow. With them fucking beautiful nurse titties. Oh yes. With Joey. All right. It sticks out in my fucking mind. My pops actually recorded it off of HBO. I can't tell you how many times I rewatched that fucking you know VHS. <laughs> um, it just stuck in my brain so goddamn Watch much. Enough to wear it out. Yeah. Uh, truly. Oh, man, yeah, absolutely, done, truly. I've done that to so like many I'm, I'm guessing it was around 88, you know, because yeah. uh, it came out in 87. So I'm figuring about 88 is when it hit fucking HBO. 89 uh, on VHS, I think, maybe. Y- yeah, some something yeah. like that. Um, but I remember my first introduction was it on VHS. Uh, right after Pops, you know, ripped it off of HBO. And I just fell in love with the entire character. The, the 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 premise, the the thoughts behind it. I was like, this is this is fucking amazing. Absolutely fucking love it. Not just for the you know the the, the beautiful big titty nurse, but the you know, the creativity I mean, it's of the kill. Not a let a letdown. No, absolutely not. She was so fucking hot. Um, Joey just being fucking strapped to that goddamn bed by those fucking tongues and stuff like that. Uh-huh. The way she was talking dirty to him, and so like that. Oh, I know you won't say anything, will you? Yeah, I, I was like, I, I was, I was like, hey, I don't know what the fuck you're like in my freaking pants. Are. Nice, <laughs> um, uh, like a pervert. Yeah, exactly. You know, fucking like six or seven years old, and it's like, yeah, yep, 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 yep. I know where I, I want it. to do with my life. I feel uh, so good. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, uh, me and Teddy Rexman are going to go to think, spend some private time. Uh, <laughs> hey, go, Ragnar. Um, but no, uh, that was my first Jerry you know, Rice introduction. And it, it just, it, 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 it blew my mind of uh, the creativity. Because, you know, here, growing up and hearing, you know, different bad guys, you know, most of them very one-dimensional and shit like that. And then you're seeing this, this asshole, this fucking douchebag just come up and shit talk people and then fuck their worlds up it just it did it fucking just showed me how creative the world could be all the other ones you see you see them in person like it's me to you exactly you know yeah and all the rest of them you don't well freddie you know you don't see them yes you know the rest of them you see yes so it's that there is a complete mind fuck and so uh, after that, you know, I did what I could do. I see as, you know, Freddy 1 and 2 as soon as I possibly could. And then every film afterwards as quickly yeah. as I possibly could. And I, and I, no regrets, no regrets whatsoever. Um, 
Now, uh, as far as kills, Dan on the motorcycle. Yep. You know, definitely in my top five. Absolutely, my you know top five. I remember uh, thinking motorcycle sales must have gone down this year. What? I was like, yeah, I think. <laughs> I'm did, did everybody pick no the way, motorcycle? Everybody wanted to fucking be that guy. Yeah. Everybody yeah. picked the motorcycle except Crystal. But I no. mean, yeah. no, he didn't. I didn't. Oh, you didn't pick it. Oh, okay. Nope. I didn't know if you did. Um, it was uh, cool, but it was lame. Yeah. Uh, the marionette kill from three. Yep. I thought that was very geniusly done. You know, and then mm-hmm. working it in with the sleepwalking aspect, uh, and KK be like, oh, you know, fuck you, then don't wake up, I don't go fuck, yeah. and shit like that. I, I thought that was a very super smart move. I wish that motherfucker terrifying. had some sort of guilt after that. Yeah, you know, he did. It, it, I think he, I think he, he kind of played it that way. He was kind of carrying it with him, like maybe he could have stopped him. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading too much into the character. Yeah. But uh, I was like, you know, this is a, a really, really cool way and a creative way of uh, killing somebody. It, it, it Not just killing it, but also using a love of theirs to kill them. I'm uh-huh. like, this is really fucking genius. Uh, probably number three would be the, uh, um, the deaf kids uh, death from Friday 6th. Yeah. Uh, or not Friday 6, um, Nightmare 6. Um, just because of how well he played. The, you know, the whole scene was played. The 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 echoiness that the scene played out. The chalkboard. The pins. Everything. The pins. You know, um, you know, so clear you can hear a pin drop. You know, from uh, um, the commercials and shit like back then. And I was like, this is really fucking good. And it, it, it made you feel what... <laughs> that character is feeling yep. uh, so clearly by taking away other senses from you. Um, like this is really fucking good, really fucking smart. Um, my second favorite death would probably be the Tino homage in New Nightmare where the babysitter is being dragged around the hospital okay. room bot, and you're actually seeing uh, the New Nightmare Freddy d- doing it You know, while like that. on the ceiling. It, it it felt like they they were playing true homage, but amped it up to the next level. Where you could where, actually see Freddy. Yeah, and you know you see Freddy looking at the kid like, "All right, fucker, what are you gonna do now?" Um, you know, with his head bent. You know, so he's trying to look you know eye to eye yeah. with the kid. I'm like, this is really fucking good. It's it, it it'd be really fucking purposely terrifying to that child, which is the entire goal of Freddy at that point. Uh, absolutely smart genius uh my favorite kill would be tina's death you know in the original um just her being dragged around the room it may not have been the bloodiest it may not have been strong the cleanest but it, it just rocked everybody's world to show it, she looked terrified yeah and it worked out it, it's a it's a it, that's why i picked it it's a great fucking yeah. uh kill scene that's well, my actually favorite fucked with the actress she had vertigo throughout that she entire did. thing yeah tina I, the actress uh who played tina did so fucking much for nightmare you know, literally putting centipedes in her mouth to, you know, show the stuff. Um, you know, going through that fucking, you know, that room. Uh, being put in, zipped up into a body bag. All right, when every Shit. instinct in your yourself has yeah. to be fighting against that. All right, and, you know, nope, I got to try to remain calm. I got to try to remain cool, and, you know, while I'm being zipped up. And there was no zipper for her to unzip herself from yeah. on the inside. Uh, mentally having to get over the 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 the, the base human you know Anguish. reactions that yeah. you're going through, um, but this fact that Tina's death was just being dragged around the room, just showing how powerful this character, you know, how powerful Freddy Krueger, you know, or, or Fred Krueger, as you know, in the first one mm-hmm. he was known as, uh, is. Um, and no rules, the standard rules do not apply anymore. I was like, this is fucking genius. This is wonderful. This raises the fear level uh, to an immense, immense bar. And I get full credit for it. What uh, are your uh, ranking? All right. So, starting from worst to best. Worst, the remake. I give them credit. Yeah. They were trying to give their Kruger his own voice. They were trying to replicate certain scenes, but in a new light. 
the 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 scene where uh it keeps flashing back and forth between the store aisles and the boiler room store aisles boiler room as she's being dragged i'm like all right this is a very visually engrossing you know it can be a visually engrossing film uh i give it credit for trying but it just failed it it absolutely failed it relied too heavily on cgi and in crappy crappy cgi um it relied too heavily on on uh all right no we are going to go he is a pedophile plain and simple i think if they had gone from the angle a little bit they started in the beginning is he was he actually a pedophile or did the town get it wrong and you're punishing a potentially innocent man who just actually genuinely loved and cared about these fucking children um i'm like that that would have created a a, a, an interesting dynamic behind the scenes which could have brought a different motivation for Kruger and it was Halloween Rob Zombie all over again yeah. um, but no then they came out flat out say no nope. oh yeah you know he absolutely was fucking touching kids absolutely no fucking if and their butts here's fucking picture evidence here's fucking everything you fucking need here's his weird little fucking room that he fucking hid away in while he fucking did it um, I was like nope this was a poor choice of them to do that uh jackie earl haley i give him credit for trying to be something different than robert england because you can't touch robert england so don't try to be fucking robert england don't don't fucking try (laughs) be you and he tried but then they shit all over his character throughout the rest of the film it didn't work so the remake is absolutely fucking worst uh my opinion the second worst would be five um i felt it was very lackadaisical put together um i don't try to shit on child actors because child actors don't know better uh and they don't have the experience to draw from as a whole but i felt that the jacob character was wasted his fucking weird ass wannabe freddy voice was garbage um it was it was a good idea that they just could not execute they could not figure out how to properly execute and it pissed me off uh the new group that they tried to sell to you were the very two-dimensional uh but they're trying to sell it to you you're supposed to care about these fucking people and you're like i really don't there's no reason for me to care there's about no sustenance yeah yeah so uh, i just felt like it was a waste as a whole um the next uh worse would be probably freddy's dead even though it had some great comedy uh including the the you know the you know the map says you're fucked line which was genius in my mind um the the fucker sitting on the bed i ain't getting out of this fucking bed bread bursting the flames fuck uh, you know, <laughs> like, had some great comedy some great light moments and shit like that that really spoke to the freddy character as a whole but it was sloppily put together and i was uh, i was angry at it um because if you're gonna kill such an iconic character do them but in a better fucking film than this yeah. horse shit they fucking put on the screen yeah um but the next worst would probably be four in my opinion um and I try not to hold that one to too much, you know, anger because they're literally making up as they go along. You know, the entire fucking film, they're making it up. And what they made up at least told a story. And I give them credit to that. Had some some creative ideas and kills. Uh, were they always executed the best they could? Absolutely not. Was the acting anywhere decent? Not particularly uh but they tried they absolutely tried and came up with some visit very cool visual effects uh my next favorite would be uh jason versus freddy or freddy versus jason uh i thought that actually did a really good job of telling both sides of the story in in, in a good way very good motivation it made sense why they would be meeting up while they'd be fighting the you know the groups that they're fighting against uh it was cool um some cool you know you know things you see on the screen including the um the 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 freddy caterpillar i was like all right that's 
that's pretty fucking cool. I, I like that motherfucker right there. Um, and then when he takes it over the 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 human body and uh, yeah, I got this bitch um, where he's trying to fucking you know knock out Jason and shit like that before he gets cut in half. I'm like, all right, all right, I can see Freddy absolutely fucking doing that, taking over a fucking body instead of killing them in order to try to put them down, and then doesn't give a fuck that the body got sacrificed. That works. That works. Let me handle yeah. this bitch. Exactly that right there. So that'll be the next one. Uh, my next one would probably be two. It would it'd be two. Just because they're trying something different. Yeah, introducing the power of him able to infect the real world and take over the and kill people in the real world. I thought it was really cool. It, making the final girl an actual guy. I was like, okay, this is taking something different. Uh, they're trying other avenues than what we are traditionally you know told to accept uh and i think it's kind of a really fucking cool highest body count of all the films by far uh i i give credit to it uh for trying something different especially after the mass success of the first one they didn't want to just do a photocopy They're like nope we're gonna go ahead and take this and spin it on its head and we'll go from here I give them credit for their guts in that. Next one would be three, because uh, that's when we're seeing uh, Freddy develop his voice, becoming the Freddy that we all n- remember. Mm. The uh, the asshole, the smart ass, um, having fun and just fucking with people left and right. Uh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely fucking beautiful to me. Uh, I can rewatch that film, you know, forever and be happy with it. Uh, my next favorite would be uh, New Nightmare mm. because it it completely re fucking you know recreates everything that we thought we knew and like nope you really fucking did it and we're putting it in the real world we're changing on its head. It was basically Scream before, right before Scream, um, revitalizing it, re- returning it back to its true horror roots that it was going for in one and two. Yeah, because it totally left the comedy. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely threw it out in, in, in a believable way. Uh, it explained why it was throwing the comedy out and didn't leave you wanting. Robert England did an amazing job in delivering once again the the scary factor in a dual uh, role yeah as himself and uh, everybody did a great job in the, in the multiple roles that yeah. they did um and then my favorite number one would be the original yep uh, absolutely the the wonderful creativity behind it the uh the, the the all right we're gonna go ahead and tell you it's gonna be tina it's gonna be the final girl then 20 minutes later nope we're taking her off the fucking board here is fucking Heather. Uh, you didn't think she was going to be the one, but she is the one. Um, Nancy, not Heather. You're right. He- Heather Langkamp, Nancy, is uh, the character's name. That's uh, a good segue into your pipe reviews because yeah. number one is your is the original. Is. Um, critically, I'm going to give number one a three and a half critically. Yeah, we're all about the same. Yeah. We're um, about critical. There was, the acting wasn't necessarily the best in the world. I absolutely can understand and respect that, but that's also what they were in the time. There were yeah. slasher films. You weren't expecting high end shit. The music, it did really well to purvey the weird creepiness. Even in the very beginning, when they go into the boiler, you have some weird space effect sounds and shit like that. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? But it's enough to make you feel weirded out by it. Um, the sp- the, the practical effects for how low budget they were, I was super satisfied with. Charles he, Bernstein did the score, and that's one thing I have to say is that it was an amazing score. It and it actually it's the iconic. theme. But the one thing I fucking love more than anything in Freddy vs. Jason is when you have that theme and then you hear the ch ch yeah. mixed in. Yep. I thought that was excellent. Sorry, you sorry I had to say that. You absolutely have to merge too. Yeah. Um, but just to hear the the you immediately recognize it you re- immediately recognize the 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 theme from you know freddie 
uh, as soon as you hear it, uh, and that is a sign of a good fucking theme. Playing someone is when you recognize it, when you hear it, it, you can hear a few notes and you recognize, oh, no, that's Nightmare. That's what that the fucking is. Uh, and I give all the credit for that. You know, you recognize Michael Myers' theme, you recognize Jason's theme, you recognize fucking Freddy's fucking uh, theme music. Uh, the special effects, like I said, were for how low budget they were. I thought the practical effects as a whole worked really well, paid off. Um, the the dragging Tina's body in the in the clear body bag through the hallway scene and not seeing fucking strings, not seeing anybody hands, not seeing an overlay, you know, from another you know uh, film cell and stuff like that. I thought that worked really goddamn well. Yep. You know, especially for the early fucking eighties. You know, we are a much more advanced audience. You know, we're we're trained to look for these things, not to see that, and. It, it worked so damn well in the the resolution that we're all seeing this film in now. Uh, this shows the the you know, the awesome effects they were putting through. It really does, and the fact that Craven came along and was like, all right, you got these tip, typical you know slasher killers. I'm gonna make a slasher killer that has a fucked up motivation and has his own personality that he can actually show to the audience that this being this silent hulking beast and somebody that you can identify immediately was amazing. And it, what he did for the slasher films will, I will always be forever thankful for. So I'm going to give enjoyment wise though, a, a strong, strong, strong four and a half. If not four, three, three, four and three quarters, depending on what mood I'm in at the time. I'm surprised you didn't do five. Um, for enjoyment, I understand yeah, critical, no, 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 but no, no, I, no. I'm really surprised you didn't do enjoyment for five on that one. No, uh, I, honestly, because three will always have a softer spot in my heart, just because that's what introduced me, right? And that's what introduced you know Freddy as Freddy. Yeah. But I respect the shit out of one. I respect the fuck out of one. Um. And that's why I cannot give Nightmare 1 a 5 just because of the soft spot I have for 3. And that's strictly emotional, you know, t- baggage that I'm tied to. Uh, strictly right there. So I cannot give it, a, uh, you know, that high, uh, as high of a rating as I would give 3 just because of the, uh, the, the baggage I have tied with 3. Okay. All right. Um, so thank you all for joining me on this saga that we went through i know it's a super super long episode i appreciate all your guys' time i've been looking forward to this for literally years that you know since day one of us starting this fucking podcast uh ragnar ron crystal chase Thank you for going on this journey with me. Listeners, thank you so much. If you disagree with me, um, well, welcome to primetime, bitch. This is what it is. <laughs> if you made it this far, congrats. Yes. All right, guys, that is the end of our episode of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Legacy. And I will say that this is this is coming to an end to our Halloween series here soon. We got one more episode, so stay tuned for our last episode on Halloween night or, or Halloween morning, Halloween day. Of uh, Beetlejuice and uh, yes, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun. This is hopefully you guys enjoyed this Halloween series. We had so much fun doing them, and uh, uh, we already are excited for next year when we start our Halloween yes. series. We already got our we already got our picks coming up. So Freddy got fingered. Oh God! So I, think I saw that sequel. <laughs> Have you even seen Freddy Got Fingered? Tom Green. It's actually a real movie. I know. Oh, <coughs> you ruined the joke there, Ron. Yeah, I, you absolutely just fucking ruined that joke. Yeah, apparently. way to fucking go. Yeah, I always ruin things. All right, guys. Well, y'all have a great night. It's three thirty in the morning, and uh, we're done. So uh, it's four o'clock in the morning. Oh, Love you. Sleep well, everyone. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Make sure to have some nightmares, and Freddie will One, be there to. One, two, Freddie's coming for you. Three, four, better. Are we serious? Gonna do the whole fucking song? Door. You started it. Five, six, grab yeah, your crucifix. Seven, eight, don't stay up late. 
Nine, ten, never sleep again. Oh never my. sleep again. I'm fucking tired. Yeah, shut <laughs> up, bitches. Later. Hey guys, this is Ron. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Barrel Age Flicks. 2022 has been an amazing year with our great shows, including BAF, The Small Batch, Sammy Select, and The Tasting Room. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Guys, this helps out enormously. Give us a follow on Instagram at Barrel Age Flicks Podcast. If you would like to send us a special film request, please contact us via Instagram, and we will give you a personal shout-out on the show. We are also on Facebook and Twitter. Our podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Audible, Pocket Cast, Spotify, CastBox, iHeartRadio, and Pandora. Special thanks to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio on YouTube for his awesome music. This guy fucking rocks. Check him out. I want to give a shout out to Sammy, one of our guest hosts on the show who does our amazing album artwork. Thank you, Sammy. Our podcast only exists because of listeners like you. To find other great shows, head over to Deluxe Edition Network. Hope you join us for our next episode. Later, guys.